Here we go. Okay. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Travis, give me your public input statement, please. Yeah. So the first public input session is a 15-minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. A second public input session will be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for normal residents. The board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that fall under the law regarding executive sessions cannot be made during public input. For example, matters involving personnel. Uh, with the submittal aspect, we have a little bit of changes that we have to tweak. Right. When we get moving. Okay, so I apologize, but I unmasked because it's really hard to read these with my mask on. Um, we have a lot, uh, about 20 or 25 or 30 public input comments. Several of them have already been sent to the board at length in a letter format. So I'm going to, I'm not going to read those out loud tonight. I'm going to put them into the body of the minute. So all of the public input will be on the, your minutes and be able to be accessed publicly. Um, but I just think for, um, you know, clarity and stuff, I think it's better if we do it this way. The other piece is we have several other pieces of other of public input that are from non-residents. They're from our teachers, some of our teachers. So my thought process, if this makes sense, is I'll read all of the resident um, public input in the first round. And some of those are teachers because we have teachers that live in districts. So, so it's a representation. And then after we have our board workshop and conversation, which I think most of this speaks to, we could add those other pieces in if you'd like. Regardless, all of them will be in writing in the minutes of the meeting. Is that sufficient? Okay. All right, let us begin. So our first, she's, yeah, and I'm trying to get it all in under 15 minutes. Let's see what happens. All right, so our first piece of public input, there's actually um, four, three or four that are addressed specifically about graduation. So I'm gonna read those. And we can sit with that. And if anybody, if and our administrators want to respond now, that's fine. Or we can talk about it in the future. But I'll read those first. Can I just ask a question? Are sure. we talking about graduation later in the workshop? Um, it wasn't part of this particular moment, but I do think that we can. Um, I think it needs to be out of. Well, I think we can make a general sort of comment about our goals. Okay. If that makes sense. Um, so first, public input: Nicole Winslow of Berwick. Graduation is right around the corner. We, we all should have a plan A and plan B already en route for the class of 2021. Again, our kids are the ones getting the biggest shaft this year. Let's get this started already. Uh, let's see, number two, Gra uh, this is from Barb Marzoli of Berwick. Dear school board and administration, as a parent of a senior this year, I am asking for you to please approve and announce graduation plans and any other senior event that may take place ASAP. This, this graduation class of 2021 needs something to look forward to. The governor has announced as of June 1st, outdoor venues can be at 100% capacity. I am sure all will be fine with utilizing our fields at Noble High School to have this year's graduation. Many of us senior parents are waiting in the wings to spring into action to make it happen and we implore you let us get started. This is from Michelle Corner from Berwick. First, thank you all for your hard work this year. To navigate this unprecedented time is truly a challenge and the time and effort from you all is noticed and appreciated. My family along with many others are asking for a firm decision regarding graduation and senior events. We can't change what the kids have lost thus far, but we can create worthwhile events to celebrate our seniors. We are also asking for communication on what has been planned, what is in process, and what isn't going to happen. Currently, there are a few groups that are working to plan events separate from the school because they have asked and heard nothing in regards to graduation, prom, senior ball, etc. It's a shame that all those efforts aren't united with the efforts from Noble. However, I'm still hopeful that if parents are told real details about what is being planned and what is needed, that we can all join forces instead of working separately. I think a letter to seniors from administration is desperately needed and an open invitation for collaboration committees on some sort of joint efforts. 
Um, this particular group of senior parents has had the highest rate of volunteers from the first time these kids were in kindergarten until now. Involve us, tap our ideas, together we just might be able to pull off an epic ending to a crazy year. So those are the three that were related to the graduation piece. Um, and I think we can talk about that. Well, the, do you want to do you want to say anything now? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So the good news is that when we began taking a look at what the previous guidelines were, I think they were released on March 2nd, and we said, okay, you know, they looked familiar because they were similarly restrictive to where we had been. So we started some very initial planning meetings and then had planned to bring in a group of kiddos to take a look at some options under those guidelines and provisions. Then everything kind of changed with um, the new guidelines for indoor and outdoor events and capacity limits. So the very good news is that given those guidelines and the timeline looking at June, we are very likely to be able to have a graduation ceremony that looks and feels like something that we've had in the past. In that 100% capacity guideline, there's still some distancing requirements in between families. So we're taking our next step, and Kevin's been kind of looking at this, is to take a look at what our technical capacity is out there. Because it's a little nebulous, there's the stadium seating, but then there's all this green space on the fields. And then to sort of work out how many tickets could be given, um, how we can seat position families so they can be together, but safe distance from other families. And we're looking at tweaking the date potentially for graduation. Right now it's on a Friday, um, and we're in session with the other kiddos on that day. So looking to put on a Saturday, potentially um, at the Jason Saturday as well. Um, to hold that event. The timing will depend on sort of those other logistics, um, whether we want to sort of push it more, you know, sooner in the day or other things that we would have to put in place for, for those distancing requirements. Um, and working with the North Park Police, who typically have um, really assist us with safety and, and, the, and the fire department too on those days. So good news is probably going to look more like what we've had in the past. Um, what we need to do is to just figure out those parameters before we really start releasing that. But we're thinking in terms of timeline, we're going to be releasing sort of the save the date piece would be next, and then bringing in um, some planning groups on how to design the seating components for families, and then to slowly start releasing um, more firm details as we get closer, hoping that nothing else shifts. And that's always the delicate balance is trying to make sure we have all of the information that we think is going to represent what's going on at that date so that we don't misrepresent what could or couldn't happen at that time. So um, that's that's the good news for graduation. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're excited. Um, you know, we were looking at what we did last year that ended up being really cool, um, it, but we know that sort of that traditional aspect um, is really important to, to folks. And our biggest concern is getting families to be able to be there with their kids watching. Um, and that, again, great news with the, the change in the guidelines for us. Yeah. Um, just, I know this isn't a discussion time right now, but when is your goal to have the save the date or to decide on the date? Um, hopefully before we get too far into April, so probably over the next couple of weeks. Um, we've shifted gears a little bit into, into planning these aspects, um, but I think once we get a clear vision of, of what our next steps here, we can then get back and tackling those other senior events as well. Yeah. Great. Do you have any, um, like one of the emails said, this class has a large amount of volunteers, <laughs> families that are volunteers, and I think that's one of the uproars that is going on right now, is that they're feeling kind of left out in the process. And I know personally I've been trying to explain to them that we've got two dynamics going on right now that we're trying to address one dynamic before we move on to the next dynamic. Exactly. Um, but we'll is there... Travis, we'll, huh? we'll get in touch with them. Yeah, I'm saying, is there a way for the person that they should be reaching out to? Is there a way that we can communicate with them? Yeah, since Cynthia Playstead's um, senior class advisor, she's been doing a great job getting some of the more celebratory pieces in place, the yard signs, and working with you know, the two families who've started some. Um, fundraising for senior dues for caps and gowns. So some of that information is starting to go out, but we would love all the help we can get with this. These events are difficult to pull off under regular circumstances. Um, what we're trying to do is just be, make sure we know what our boundaries are in terms of those guidelines, our capacities. Um, and once we really make sure that we're clear on all that, 
we would be, we would love the, the help and assistance for sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, back to other public input. So this is from Misty Ramsdell from Lebanon. Our schools need to go back to a more normal status. We need to let our students come together this spring, like a couple of more outdoor events to promote their classes. My seniors invoke in-person learning four days a week for two hours each day. Why are we continuing to do remote learning when other schools are full-time in school learning? Maine has been a green state for a month now. It's time to bring some normalcy back to the students. Give them some classmate time socializing with each other. Uh, let's see, Cynthia Robinson of Berwick. With three months left in this chaotic school year, I would ask that the board refrain from changing the current hybrid learning model. While this model has not been perfect for everyone, it has been the model used for the last seven months of school and is the model that these kids are used to. In a year where things have been chaotic and constantly changing for them, changing their school schedule at this time would only add chaos to their life and require them to adapt to yet another change. Let them finish the school year with the current model in place and reevaluate this summer as to what model we should be used next year. Jessica Winston of Berwick is, uh, has a question, what is happening to our athletic department? Why do we continue to lose coaches? So we'll follow up on that. A little off the rest of the topics tonight. Um, let's see, this is from John St. Hilaire from North Berwick. Greetings school board members. My wife and I have two students age 13 with learning disabilities. We want to applaud the teachers. The educators have consistently knocked themselves out to make the boys' education as meaningful as possible. Yet, our sons are not learning as much as they have in years past because they are only in school two days a week. This is not enough. Because of their learning differences, our sons are doing their best to attend remotely but are not able to get their work completed. My wife and I feel that full-time schooling is necessary for the most vulnerable learners in our district. Please consider full-time schooling in the fall of 2021, even if it's a in homogenous groupings so that they have a chance of, remain, of retaining their learning with the practice and reinforcement they used to receive during a full-time school week. We believe we are speaking for many parents who have learners like our sons. They are being left behind and this is a serious and legal issue. Please honestly and sincerely consider this request. We thank you. Kelsey Billado of North Borough. Thank you so much for everything you've done for our kids and teachers this year. I know it has been brutal and there have been so many hard decisions to make. Personally, I feel like the board and our schools have done an amazing job. Communication has been great and it truly seems like our kids and teachers safety is of the utmost importance. I know there's no magical way to make every day everyone happy and some people are really just in impossible situations right now and that makes these choices even harder. Thank you so much for making the hard choices and keeping everyone's safety and mental health the top priority. I know you are all doing all you can. Carol Hatch from Lebanon. Will schools reopen five days per week, full student body on campus, no remote by September? Great question. Um, let's see. This is Mike Morris of North Berwick. I firmly believe that with the school year only containing about 12 more weeks, we as a district should not stray from the current path we have set ourselves on with a remote hybrid model as kids have already adapted to this model and throwing change into it would be detrimental to children's education as they already adapted to the routines of the hybrid remote model we are currently under. Valerie Bastion Bastianella, um, sorry Valerie, Given the recent guidance by both CDC and federal government, it seems prudent to consider bringing the children back to full-time in-person learning this year. Many of our students are suffering by the social ramifications of being out and away from their peers. My straight-A student has lost all motivation for school and struggles to even leave her room most days. Please consider this change This has been that has been adopted by the state of New Hampshire and many other states with no negative COVID, COVID ramifications. Our children need their peers and need to be in class to learn best, especially in the upper grades. Jessica Kelly from North Berwick, I'd love to see the elementary kids in school five days a week and no longer have remote on Wednesdays. Would also love to have the school day revert back to the normal time. These 9.15 a.m. drop-offs allow too much time in the mornings. North Berwick Elementary has been amazing through all of this. Thank you for Mr. A to be out every morning with a warm welcome. Okay, this is from Rosanna Pass, a North Berwick parent, resident, and a Spanish teacher at the High School. Dear school board members, I thank you for the many hours you all spend working towards a good school system. 
I want to highlight some points, both as a parent of a student in our district and as a teacher in the same. As a parent, I am very thankful to my junior daughter's teachers who prepare and deliver classes for her and challenge her in many ways. It's a delight for me to hear my daughter share her learning and questions with me and to have good conversations regarding what she has been learning. Given the opportunity, she would like to be back in the classroom more time. However, she understands that it is not possible to make it happen now, given the situation we are currently facing regarding COVID and vaccinations for all. As a teacher, I'd like for more people in the community to know of the many planning hours spent on preparing for instruction. The current model not only requires me to create and adjust teaching materials, but also to meet the needs of students, whether in person or online. We understand that other districts have moved in on to, in, to full-time in-person learning, but we are not like other districts. And when we make changes, we must take time to look at how those changes will impact every facet of our teaching and learning. These changes will highly impact the elected teachers who have various grade levels in one class. I strongly feel that changing the current schedule will create a new problem for the following year in terms of equity of instruction. Students who take our, took our course last semester and will be far behind our current students will have covered more curriculum by the end of the year. Our students have been through a full year of uncertainty and as much as we may want to provide them with stability, I fear that changing their schedule once again will only disrupt the stability that we have been able to hold throughout this semester. Many teachers at Noble take pride in saying how supportive the district has always been toward their teachers and students. I thank you for showing that support by letting us share our thoughts and be part of the conversation. I must share that as a teacher, we feel disheartened that now we must again prepare for another change after spending so much time, including part of the summer, to be part of the best solutions possible under the extreme circumstances we are in. I thank you for your time and consideration of these matters, sincerely. Uh, Lindsay, oh boy. Sorry, Lindsay, I wrote your name and now I can't read it. Um, she's from Northburg. Oh, Lindsay Kelker, I had to think about it. I just wanted to take a minute to recognize and thank the teachers, staff, and administrators for the district of the, for their tireless efforts this year. Teaching in a pandemic is a situation no one could have prepared for. I recognize you all have been consistently readjusting your procedures, altering the delivery of the lessons, and learning new technologies, all while doing the best you can to keep our children safe. As a parent of two elementary school students, I'm incredibly thankful in a world where people frequently speak up only to express their criticism. I wanted to publicly express my gratitude. Um, Josie Chadbourne of North Berwick, also a teacher for us as well, and a, and a mom and resident. My kids are in fifth and ninth grade. My ninth grader is in school one day a week and it's not ideal, but she is continuing to learn and grow. My fifth grader is in school four days a week. As a younger learner, he is still mastering foundational skills, so his need for in-person learning is significantly greater than hers. What both of my kids need, more than anything else, is consistency. Consistency is what keeps them mentally healthy and academically challenged. Please do not destroy their rhythm by making massive changes at this point in the year. I honestly do not believe that any shift in schedule will be worth it for everyone. Uh, let's see, I have two more. Uh, this is from Pam Texera. She's 11 and resident and um, also a teacher for us. Good evening. I hope all is well. First and foremost, I want to thank you for the work you do for our district. Definitely a challenging position. I also want to thank all of the administrators who have spent countless hours to ensure the safety of everyone in our district. There were many valid points made by the community members, as noted at the last school board meeting on March 4th. But COVID-19 is still here and should not be an afterthought at this point in time. With only approximately 12 weeks left of the school year, it does not seem appropriate to change our schedule at this time. I believe we should look at things for the fall, but this late in the school year just does not make sense to create so much upheaval. If this was a possibility during September, I would have been in total agreement. There, and this point number two, there, were, there are many staff, teachers, custodians, ed techs, secretaries, et cetera, who are not vaccinated at this time. Many staff members have been trying for hours late at night to get an appointment to no avail. Also, many of our staff are not residents of Maine, so their waiting period may be longer to receive one. There is a waiting period to receive the second shot as well, then after two week, and then after a two week waiting period recommended by the CDC to ensure there are no side effects to someone who has been fully vaccinated. Three, it took a tremendous amount of time and hard work to make the moves that happened over the summer. It was a serious undertaking with lots of strategic planning and many, many weeks to finalize the moves. To make attempts to accomplish moving classrooms while school is in session seems like it may cause tremendous interruptions to many school days. Four, for those who feel three feet versus six feet of social distancing is doable, may not have been in a classroom at the high school with 20 plus students and a teacher in attendance. 
Many of the high school students are not little kids anymore and you, being three feet apart may not be safe. In the cafeteria, students will remain socially distanced at six feet because they have their masks off and the buses can only transport 24 students at a time. Five, there are other grade levels using the high school classrooms, grades six, seven, and eight. Well, they have to be relocated too. We've had so many changes this year and we still want to be back in school full time, but only when it's safe for everyone. Six, spring break is right around the corner and many of our college students may partake in this and travel to Florida or other places. Upon their return, who knows how this will affect the residents um, in Maine. Will there be an increase in the number of cases? Too many unknowns. Seven, we are hearing much about how the, the students need sports. I agree, as sports are a wonderful place to build confidence, friendships and skills that can serve students for the future. But this should not be a de determining factor in any decision the board makes, as athletics is dictated by the MPA. Lastly, and I'm gonna take a sip really quick because I'm really dry. Lastly, <clears throat> My mother passed away from COVID recently and she had not left her home for a few months. Someone visiting her brought it into her home, most likely an asymptomatic person, and now she's gone. I would not want this to happen to others because we did not do our due diligence. If you're able, visit all the schools, measure the three foot versus six foot with older students in mind, speak with the custodians and the staff before any decisions are made. Of course, I will continue to do my job to the best of my ability and respect any decisions that are made. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. Danielle Minuti, North Berwick, and uh, a parent and uh, a teacher with us as well. Good afternoon. I wanted to express to the board that while I support more time with high school students, especially if that can be in person, I don't know if it's possible at this time. I also want to clarify that as a high school teacher, I am spending roughly 10 to 12 hours each week meeting one-on-one -on -one with students on top of class time, emailing parents, students, um, commenting on documents, developing new lessons and grading. While there may be a public perception of days off, I assure you that this is not the case. Teachers are working very hard to support students throughout the day and working even more hours than the normal school year to do so. I also wanted to ask the board to reconsider increasing the number of students in person by too much. We know that we know it is working and we have a plan that was developed over months of careful planning. As a teacher and as a parent of students in the district, I am concerned about being going too far, too fast, too soon when it comes to reopening plan. Thank you. So that's our public input. That was 18 minutes. Wow, that bad. I'm so super bad. dry. Hold on. Oh, good for you. <laughs> and we don't have a student report. No, we do not. <laughs> so, for the minutes. I want to apologize that you didn't get the minutes till yesterday. That was totally my fault. <laughs> I was got a little away from myself. Anybody else want to make a motion? Let's make a motion to accept the minutes of the meeting. Thank you. All in favor? And we do have everybody. Yeah. All those hands yes. are there. Okay, okay thank you. Um, okay, so we have moved the workshop um, up to the fifth agenda item, and then we'll do the policy readings and other stuff afterwards. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I just want to start by um, talking a little about where we were 
very briefly, and then we will move ahead into um, some thoughts and some plans that the high school administration has been working on um, for quite some time, and then we will have some discussion and questions, questions about what was presented, but also any kind of other questions that you may have. So just very briefly, and I, I hope everybody can hear me over remotely, so, okay, good, thank you. Um, so we had several priorities in the beginning um, while we were developing our hybrid <coughs> model, which was this past summer. We had um, health and safety as our first priority. We then talked about um, elementary students to be in person as um, much as we could have them in. That was supported uh, not only through our team that was developing our hybrid plan, but also the main DOE, the CDC, DHHS, and the American Pediatric Association all had supported and endorsed having elementary students in um, as, as one of the tiers of priority. We then, our other priority was creating a comprehensive hybrid model, K-12, and providing appropriate and accessible technology for remote learning, because we knew we were going to have quite a few students that were participating remotely. And then we knew that we needed to think about how we could increase time as things um, either the, with the vaccine or if things kind of settle down. So we, the high school will talk about how they have increased student time uh, over the course of the school year um, and then how their, their plan or their thoughts to increase um, from this point forward. Uh, so the six requirements that we need to follow, which we still need to follow, um, PPE, masking, hand hygiene, physical or social distancing, daily screening, and then return to school protocols. So we, when we submitted our hybrid plan to the Maine Department of Education, we had to sign off that we were following, as every school had to sign off, that we were following these requirements. Um, so I think what I'd like Amy to spend a little bit of time on right now is just talk about overall our cases to date um, just the number that we've had um, across the district. Okay, so um, since September, we have had 83 cases in our district. Um, we, there was a small handful, or maybe a large handful more that happened over Christmas break that didn't affect us at all because we took that extended time. So those aren't counted in that number 83 that I gave you. Um, and then I did just stumble upon a couple more cases that ha happened in that time frame that weren't reported to me by the patient or by the CDC because the test results came from New Hampshire. So that's um, something that districts on the border are dealing with. If you get tested in New Hampshire, it doesn't always get sent to the state of Maine, even if you're a resident here. So there was a couple slackers that didn't get to my desk, but it didn't matter because we weren't on, you know, in session anyways. Um, looking specifically at the high school, um, we've had 27 total cases. And out of those, um, due to our hybrid plan, 13 of those um, cases involved no contact tracing whatsoever. So no moving students to remote learning. Um, so if you're a senior and you come on a Wednesday, you get sick on a Saturday and test positive, we don't need to do the two days prior. Um, however, if you know, students are in more, more cases will happen, more kids will have to move remotely due to contact tracing. That's obviously a given. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I have. Uh, just to give you an idea, out of those 27 cases involved in the high school, that included a total of 172 close contacts that we had to send to remote learning. Um, the lowest case number included four people, and then the highest we was 54. So that's just a little bit of information about what we've seen district-wide and um, at the high school level. 
Do, have we seen, do we know, I mean, I assume we would know if any of the cases in the district were transmitted within a classroom or like within the district? They haven't seen that happen in nearly any of the schools in Maine. Um, maybe a couple, not in our district. Um, although we have had um, schools in outbreak status and Noble High School still continues to be in outbreak status because we see them crop up quicker than they drop off our radar. Um, none of them have been found to have been transmitted in the classroom. Do you have a breakdown of, uh, of the 83 cases? How many of them are kids versus adults? I have the ability to get that. <laughs> Do you have a ballpark? Like, would you if you would you say it's fifty-fifty or? I would s probably say more students. And that's something that we, when we send our letters home, we try not to delineate if it was a staff versus a student. Yeah, we try just to the person associated with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would say more students than staff. Yeah, but it's not like. For, for staff and the rest students, it's, it's, there's a percentage there. Yeah. Is there a way to get up those? Yeah. Summer? Yeah. I can get them tomorrow. You need to send you an email with it. I'll send it to them, they send it to you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. So before we start with the high school, I just want to acknowledge that um, the high school has been thinking about this um, hybrid plan and how to increase student participation in person uh, for months and months. So this is not something that um, just hit, hit the radar a couple months ago or a couple weeks ago. It has been ongoing and several plans have been thought about and um, you know, they're at a disadvantage in the fact that when we created the hybrid plan, we had to move so many students. And so it, the, the brunt of the, of the challenge falls to the high school. So we acknowledge and thank you for your work on this. It's not easy, it's not easy at all. And there's so many layers to every single situation. So thank you for your time and your commitment. Yeah. It, I think too, before you guys begin, one of the things that we kind of forget about is that we're in the process of trying to build um, additions to three elementary schools, which is why we actually had to move our fourth and fifth graders to the middle school because there is there we're already tight spaced and then all of a sudden we had to reduce space that much more. So I, it, it, there's a huge domino effect of everything that we've been doing. And so our, so that's one of the struggles with our district when you compare it to others. It's just every single district is very unique in what they're dealing with. And we just happen to be that in that place where our population is kind of right up there. So enough from us. Go. <laughs> Ready. Ready for you. Okay. Um, before we start, I'd like to uh, introduce some people here. You may not know everybody. This is Nancy Samard. She's the director of school counseling. She's been here for many years. How many years? 17. 17. Okay. They won't <laughs> <laughs> Uh, AJ Duport, assistant principal, former math teacher at Noble High School, and as well as decided this is the place to be. Absolutely. And Alison Curry, uh, the other assistant principal. Um, I'd also like to um, thank Amy for all the work she's done. She has been on call 24 hours a day. She has. The weekends, vacations, getting phone calls, responding to them, and doing the uh, phone calls to families and kids and parents. So thank you very much. We appreciate that. Uh, uh, do we share the document that we yeah. have? Yeah. Okay. Okay, on the second page, you'll see a photo. If you could just, I'll just say that for the, for the board members that are remote, we did share the presentation with you that the, that is going to be covered right now. So you can go to your email and see and, and then uh, be able to follow along much more easily that way. And can you, for people that are listening remotely, can you guys hear everybody okay? Okay, good. So did I send that to you? I don't remember seeing it. Okay, that's all right again. <laughs> so I also wanted to recognize um, 
high school teachers. On the second page, there's a picture of um, students being welcomed to school this morning and yesterday, and that we welcome again tomorrow as part of uh, Project Gratitude. Um, and teachers are out there expressing their gratitude for having these students in our building. They came about uh, 45 minutes to an hour early to school, set up uh, balloons and played music and uh, did some dancing. It's quite impressive and it was very cold. And uh, this is sponsored by uh, the National Honor Society, the French Honor Society and the Spanish Honor Society and a bunch of other teachers that came up. You can't see Allison there on the right, she's playing the trombone. Yes. Uh, and I was on the tambourine. <laughs> Um, something that uh, and I'm not sure everybody in the public understands is that um, I haven't had a haircut since last March. <laughs> this is, uh, I apologize for that, but uh, we'll be uh, making an appointment for that in two weeks from now. Stuff to look forward to in the pandemic. Um, we have, we want to get kids back in school very badly. And I know you do too. Um, there's some things that are um, sort of barriers to doing that for us. We're the third largest school in the state of Maine. Uh, public school, Thornton Academy is larger, but we can count them. Uh, and we're the only uh, uh, large school that has five grades to deal with. And we only have access to our kids three days a week. So it makes it especially difficult. Um, and our buses are operating at 33% capacity, so it limits the number of kids we can transport. So these are all things we've been working, uh, trying to work around. Um, and we have to continue to maintain uh, six feet distance during lunches. So that's a uh, uh, challenge. And our teachers are also teaching kids in person and teaching them remotely at the same time. So that makes it especially difficult. Um, we have a couple of ideas uh, on how we can get kids back in. We can't do five days a week, uh, but we have some uh, some ideas. I'm going to ask Allie and Chris to talk about uh, some of the things we've done in the past, some of the steps we've gone through, and then we'll uh, show you some options. Thanks. So our starting place with all of this, as Audra had mentioned, was the prioritization of, of the little guys, the K through fives. And with the, the size of those buildings, um, we created that sort of domino effect, right, where we we're pushing the kids out to other area buildings, um, leaving sort of the last domino being middle school sharing um, our space, which has been really, uh, we'll say it's fun, Mike. Yes, thank it's you. It's been fun. Uh, so we began um, knowing that we had sort of these three days to operate in, how to rotate in five grade levels um, in a way that makes sense. And it's hard to do. Um, and that's where we began the first version of the yellow or hybrid plan 1.0. And last time we met, we talked about scaling that up to the 2.0 plan, which we've been working under um, ever since. So just to review a little bit, I know that you are all probably more than familiar with this plan, but just in case there's someone out there who reviewed this, would be helpful. We're just going to quickly do that when we talk about um, options for scale up or things that we have scaled up since we saw you last. It'll just sort of make more sense in that context, potentially. So right now, um, in-person components on Monday and Tuesday, we reserve those for the, for the middle school who are in our building. So grades six and seven right now are in-person um, two days a week, and then they have remote learning experiences um, the rest of the week, which allows us to take our turn inside of the building. So for us, our in-person components take place on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And we are able to get our grade eight kids, so again, that sort of more developmentally appropriate group in the most. So we started with grade eight getting two days, leaving room and space to configure and rotate in the remaining four grade levels um, across the remaining days for the day each. And so, you know, what has been very difficult is not working out of that five day starting point. So when you hear one day, when you think about it being five, it's often like, well, what the heck? You know, why is that so few days? Um, it's because we're starting out of three instead of starting out of five. Um, so in order to make that work, we had to really twist and mold our schedules. We had to completely change how kids went about their courses, which at this point makes it a little hard for us to, to undo that without being really disruptive. And so you'll hear a little bit about what we think we can do in terms of scale up. 
without creating major chaos for the kids in terms of their courses and schedules. Um, although there, there will be some things that we'll call trade-offs or wrinkles to, to those scale plans that we'll, you'll hear. Um, but part of the, the challenge is working within a really particular structure um, to get around some of those initial barriers. Uh, we talked about last time we were here as well, um, those remote components. So while the middle school is in on Mondays and Tuesdays, we have full remote days there. And then that, that sort of scale up from, we kind of like had these half days before. So it's full remote days, all four blocks on Monday and Tuesday for those kiddos. And we had talked about increasing the clarity and expectations for the kids on their asynchronous remote days, their off days um, when they're not in the building and remote on Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays by the entrance and exit tickets um, and clarifying for kids that that is not a day off. This is what you should be working on and having more structured check-in time with teachers. So all of those things um, took off after we saw you last. I'm on the two other components piece, yellow hybrid plan, and there's a link there, which I hope you can see. Okay. And these are the things that we talked about in these last time as well, that they happen off the schedule, if you will, in a way that's not articulated. We just look at the, the foundation or base schedule. So the good news, I think we all know, is that athletics is, is back in person. So we're looking forward to starting our spring season in, I think, a week and a half, two weeks-ish. Uh, so we're in between seasons right now. We also have a new sport called eSports. Um, which we were able to begin um, bringing in some kids who've been um, interested in competitive video gaming. So this is a new venture for us. And that I bring that up because um, we have typically in the past had gaming club here at school, and it's provided a way for kids who've typically been disengaged and other extracurriculars to find this really neat, cute, niche experience. Um, and a lot of those kids were interested in that esports thing. So it's a varsity sport. I mean, we're doing a bit of a pilot this year um, due to some participation um, issues, but looking to scale up next year to have it um, to be a new sport that we have here. So it's pretty neat. Um, so we look forward to that next year when we can report back on that. We've also, since we saw you last, worked on scaling up additional time for those at-risk students. So we heard um, a couple pieces from the public input around concerns around those groups in particular. So under our current model, we've had some space in the learning center, particularly on Wednesdays, to target struggling 8th, 9th, and 10th graders who would be otherwise having their asynchronous remote day. And we've been using both the bar process and the RTI process to identify those students who benefit from that time. Um, we've been staffing that with a couple of different folks um, and getting kids caught back up on their classes. We've also had a series of teachers, particularly in grade 9, coming in on their asynchronous dates to work with those kids um, specifically as well. We have also um, offered extended time in a similar fashion to juniors and seniors needing help on Thursdays and Fridays, um, in particular those who struggle with their senior projects. Um, so that's something that we could continue to scale up. We have room and space, um, particularly on those Thursdays and Fridays for those older kids now. Um, we have found that they're not so excited to join us on those days for the vote, um, but you know, we're here, so um, we'd love to continue to see that. The other piece, too, um, that was actually a surprise to us is we um, had what we thought was going to be some staffing issues turn into actually um, added in-person time for students in the Multiple Pathways program. So we began restructuring how that program is going to work, looking again try to piece together some coverage um, issues. What precipitated from that was actually an extra in-person day for the majority of multiple pathways kids, um, some of our most at-risk students here at Noble High School on Thursdays. Um, so that was something that is new since we saw you last. And just a quick review, um, our juniors and senior kiddos who participate in SRTC are able to go there in person for days a week. They've got building structures and capacities that allow that to happen that we'd love to have here, but unfortunately don't. Um, so they're getting some extra in-person time that way as well. So a quick question, how many kids is that? Um, so I think it's about 100 total across 11 and 12. Might be a little bit more than that. And so they but would they have can... their one full day here and then four additional days there. Yeah, it would be half days. So it's a two block uh, right. per day. Here, 
here in classes for half the day because they then need to log on remotely on their Wednesday to get into their remote session. For folks. But they do it from here. They can. They can. They certainly are, are welcome to. Some of them choose to do it from home. Most choose to do it. I don't remember the total number of the classes, but would you say that ends up being about a quarter of the 11th and 12th grade group? Sure, that would be. Close. Yeah, maybe it's just a touch under, but in that certainly in that ballpark. Yeah. Um, we the one of the uh, interesting features of the schedule is trying to figure out how to give more time to those AP kiddos under the breakdown of the semester one was only day one classes, semester two was day two classes. Um, knowing that if you had a semester one AP course and would truncate sort of in January and, and vice versa, you know, semester two would really start until January and then. Yeah, you, know, you feel really rushed to get ready for the AP exam. So those kiddos have had extended time in those courses called AP extension throughout the whole year. And that's something that continues to happen. And in particular, some of the math and science ones and some of the English ones as well have offered what we call extra, extra AP. That's just how we understand what we're talking about when we're speaking to each other about which section you're in um, to make sure that the kids have the, the time to be prepared. And again, that's, those are things that you wouldn't necessarily see on the schedule. Um, similarly, honors option sessions for kids participating in those occur outside of that schedule. Um, full remote option classes and help sessions. So one of the, the things Mr. Finley mentioned is the challenge of teaching kids who are choosing their remote options. So those families who um, are having kids participate in that. Um, it can be hard to cater to their needs in the classroom and have live students. So I think we kind of role played this last time we were here. We were talking to Travis at home um, while trying to talk here. And similarly tonight, um, some of those teachers have pulled those kids out for completely separate class session to make sure they meet their needs. Um, and again, you can kind of see here the last couple um, extra class sessions related to students with IEPs and as well um, the Excel program um, has a number of things kind of going on um, outside of our regular schedule. And um, I mentioned these really just to try to paint a more accurate picture of all the goings on. Uh, but these are also some of the things that when we start moving things around that we have to take into consideration because all of them end up getting impacted. So it's this big um, puzzle. So that is where we've been since we have seen you last. Thank you, Allison. Uh, okay, we have two options here that we think we could make work. Uh, one of them uh, easier than the other one. The first one is called option one. <laughs> we work quite a lot to get that title work done, but that keeps stuff for that one. Um, this would uh, give us one extra day for grade nine students on Wednesdays. And Wednesdays, uh, the day we can do that, we think because we have students in the junior and senior class that are going to vocational program and uh, there are fewer kids in the building on that day. So what we would do is bring the, the uh, freshmen in on that day and we chose the freshmen because that's the grade level where we know if you have failures in grade nine you're much less likely to graduate from high school. That's the key here. If they don't start earning their credits in grade nine the likelihood of graduating from high school really drops off significantly. Um, we would have a very short implementation time uh, with minimal impact on school lunches because a lot of our seniors aren't staying for lunch. Uh, we have very little impact on transportation because the seniors and juniors tend to drive themselves, so we have more space on buses. Uh, Trade-offs, um, we have a real problem with substitute teachers. Um, right now we only have three adults who are willing to come in and substitute the high school, which makes it extremely difficult uh, to cover more classes and more teachers. So if we have more teachers in the building, that will impact our substitutes. We have substitutes throughout the day covering different blocks of the day for different teachers. So it's really hard for three teachers to do more than uh, two grades at one time, uh, we would probably not be able to uh, provide extra in-person academic support for grades 8, 9, and 10 on Wednesdays because we'd have more kids in the building and wouldn't have the space probably to do that or the staff. And we'll have some challenges in uh, providing IEP services on Wednesdays. 
today when many students receive services remotely uh, from their case manager. And there would be disruption of family schedules, including issues with child care and transportation, probably for the families with ninth graders because they probably have those schedules already set. But I'm sure, um, hopefully, they can work around those. That is option one. All right. Mr. Dupont? Yeah. I can share some things about the second option, um, and then maybe we can tackle them both with questions or whatnot. But the second option becomes much more complex. Um, and, and certainly, I, I don't mind at all if you sort of interrupt midstream with questions. I think there are, um, as we're looking at multiple campuses and multiple days and days shifting and things like that, it gets, it does certainly get confusing. Um, but the, the point and purpose um, and the benefit of the second option is that all five of our grades would have two days of in person learning. It would, you know, uh, under option two, it, the grades eight and nine, in order to work with transportation, it would need to be a shorter day. Um, you know, so there would be an impact to the length of the day to be able to drop off one group of students, go back out into the communities, pick up the second group of students, and get them into the building, and then vice versa at the end of the school day as well. Um, so that, just as you're looking at it, thinking of that as well. Right, yes, and the other piece is we do have teachers, we have, geez, it's going to be six, seven, eight teachers that would need to be teaching on both campuses over the course of the day. So the other piece of that timeline is it would allow them to maybe teach here first block, teach their course, drive over to Noble Middle School, and meet, you know, the predominant part of their day, which is, say, ninth grade students. So some of the trade offs that would come with this plan, it would be a longer time to implement. Um, so we were looking, for example, we would need a minimum of 26 to 28 classrooms over at Noble Middle School. There currently aren't that number that is set up right now to receive students in that class setting. So it would be a complete overhaul of space in that building. The um, scheduling changes we foresee could be difficult for students. You know, a typical eighth grade student would go to now having three very different schedules over the course of the five days of the week. So that, that would just be a challenge that would take some time to adjust. Um, again, with this plan, we're concerned about the disruption to family schedules and issues with childcare. If there is an older student, um, especially with it being the Wednesday, if there's an older student who is charged with maybe taking care and making sure things go okay for an elementary school or at home, we would have all of grade eight through 12 in session during the course of that day. Um, again, with up above the increased risk of shutdown uh, due to quarantining staff. So because of the shared staff, and at that point, even a more extreme sort of missing of adults, um, because we would have all of our adults engaged on campus. And some of those um, substitutes that Joe spoke of are already tasked with being in a remote classroom. So we may have a teacher that's working remotely. So some of those adults are already charged and placed in those classrooms. So although it's three adults, many blocks of the day, it's less than three. So, you know, we, we wouldn't know until we knew. The um, Noble Middle School, we're, we're very, very fortunate here with the technology upgrades that were able to be made to support our remote learners. Um, because Noble Middle School was not supporting remote learners, it, that, that building is not, you know, does not have the same technology that our building has here. So that would be a pretty big shift for our staff and for our remote students um, who would have the same things that they've just become um, accustomed to. Um, I talked a little bit about the restructuring and altering of those classrooms. Um, it, it would be a, you know, an undertaking, certainly, and I don't want to minimize that for Brenda, um, because I think all of the district's bus routes would have to be redrawn because kids are coming with a different cohort of kids. So, you know, under this model, grade 10 is now taking the bus with 11 and 12 on a Wednesday morning. Well, that hasn't happened at all yet this year. So it's kind of just starting redrawing those lines. Um, can, can I just ask a quick question about this, just so I know yeah. what we're talking about? Is this extra day for all of them a replacement of one of their? Is it? Is, it would nope. be a fourth day of. Nope, yeah, the middle school is still staying. 
So, no, 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 but for the for nine through twelve, yes. does this does this take the place of like one of their Thursday Fridays, or does it take the place of one of their Monday Tuesdays? Thursday, 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 Thursday Fridays. Friday. Okay. Monday right. Tuesdays have with the middle school in session here. The Monday Tuesdays so that, have to stay removed. Okay, great. I just wanted to know yeah. what, where so that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Wednesday Thursday. This Friday. is all working within that Wednesday Thursday. We, we still have to work within that three day framework. So we have well, no, so. <laughs> So, yeah, so the mechanism to create the space, so like how are we getting more room in those that three-day squeeze, is we're transplanting eight and nine over to the middle school on Wednesday to then be able to push in other grades on Wednesday here, which then frees up more space across Thursday and Friday to rotate in other grades. We don't have okay. eight grades and nine grades here on Wednesdays. Correct. Right. right. We have juniors and seniors right yeah, now. But, so ninth grade, that would be part of their scale up by having Wednesday. They could now have the Wednesday shortened time and then Thursday like they have now. Eighth grade would shift from their current Thursday to this Wednesday time. Okay, so. Um, which would allow us to push in grade 10 for their extra day, okay, so pushing grade 11 and 12. Hypothetically, because this is the language that I can speak most That's clearly, it. if you were a 12th grader, you would still have Monday, Tuesday, yeah, remote, Wednesday true. in person, and now you might have Thursday, Thursday or Friday. Probably Thursday. Thursday. Okay, that's, yes. all, that's what I was trying to yep. Yep. Okay. You've got it. And You've got it. We've intentionally didn't draw out which days, which grade levels we go to, because, because it, it's prone to change potentially. That's day. fine. I just wanted yeah. to check if it was replacing one of the current remote nope. days. Okay. Yeah, no, Monday, Tuesday are static with the remote learning, and this is operating off of those three days. Um, and then, you know, one of the pieces of that limited capacity to provide the extra in-person academic support. So it would be some extra time for the whole group, but not a time to help remediate students who are struggling. Um, and then the last piece is just challenges with the curriculum um, due to mixed grade level course schedules. Things would get very, very strange, very quick, where I might have my sophomores and juniors twice before my ninth graders rotate back into the class. So how as a teacher am I gonna keep that straight as to who has seen what? Because it, it just can't go in a nice neat order that the days would, you know. And there's a way to, to fix that. Um, yes. But that way creates more disruption for the kids' schedules. So it, it would be about making a decision of what impacts the kids less and negatively less so and just to go back to AJ's point it would be like you know this table was here on Monday um, but you're here again on Tuesday but now you guys are in class for the first time so you haven't seen what they saw yesterday but you don't want to see what they're going to see for the first time again so that kind of a problem for mixed grade level classes under this model and we can tweak things to fix it but it would change the days that the kids have been used to going to school for everybody. So that's just a decision that if we go with this model, we'll have to make, we'd like to get input from our teachers on what they think would be best for kids inside the classroom there. Um, and then from, from potentially families to see to what feels less disruptive. We also talked about lunches. How are we gonna do lunches? Can we settle on that? Yeah. Lunches at the middle school? Yeah. Yeah, so I think, you know, the, the space is a little bit less over at Noble Middle School. They're using the, the gymnasium, half the gymnasium, and the cafeteria. So we think we could rotate students in, but that's, you know, again, we're pretty sure, you know, and I think one thing we did put on here, but something that would be, right now we're able to accommodate with, with basically zero days notice when a kid wants to return to in-person learning. Like, we are excited to bring them back in. We probably would have to put the breaks just because space would be coming out know, of the cafeteria at the middle school holds 100. We got to make sure we don't go over that capacity um, for lunches of 100. So we just that would be a piece that would be we just want to keep an eye out for because the numbers piece would become way more important. When you right. say implement longer, what is that? What are you talking about in time? I'm not 100% sure, sort of from the custodial standpoint at the middle school, it's hard because we, we, on a daily basis, I, like, I haven't been able to touch base with those folks and see exactly um, what would be possible. I, I don't know, because the other hard part is four days a week that building's in use, so they're kind of limited during the day how much they can move, but, but I don't... So the, I don't know. the goal would be around April break, the question would be before yeah. or after depending upon the bus routes, the custodial work, and our access to the building to restructure 
while schools are still in session um, is the question. And Kevin's on if we want to ask some questions of that. So my first question is, are we looking at these eighth and ninth graders if they go to the middle school using the same classrooms as our fourth and fifth graders? We would have to. And we initially looked at it to see if we could use the classrooms that were not in use, and unfortunately there's not enough not in use to pull that off. Right. Which would make sense given the space constraints right. that we're experiencing. But we were hopeful because, you know, Mike was great and some of the four or five folks that are, that are working with those kids sent a list of classrooms and they're just, I mean, Regardless of there's a good answer to that question, we would not be here. Right. Right. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. We would be having this conversation. So Fair enough. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that is, that is a concern, Travis. And I know that that's been a concern voiced by the staff utilizing those buildings um, about sort of the big kids being a little kid's space and their stuff at their little desks. And we yeah. would need to change the number of desks in those rooms and reshuffle the furniture in those rooms to be able to fit. The number of kids that we would have pushing into that space so that's that's where that implementation yeah. piece comes in it's, it's a very I mean, you guys all know this it's a very very different world like it's not everything doesn't go home in the backpack like it does at, in high school like there were items out and little book boxes and pencils and erasers and it was it was very different this would have to be done on uh, every wednesday right tuesday so night you would have to rotate stuff in every wednesday yes tuesday night and then Wednesday night. Yeah, or Wednesday night. Rotate it back up. You're right. Yes. Get it back. Yeah. 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 It would. Yeah. It would be a good question for Kevin. I'm not sure how much time that would take. Are you there, Kev? I'm here. He's there. Um. <laughs> currently, right now, in all the buildings during the day, um, we put a we have one or one in most two in a couple during the day to cover lunches um, and to add to each you know to add to the middle school those guys you know they work hard now just to keep up and I think just kind of adding more down there to that building is really going to put a burden on them and we have explored um, you know temporary um, cleaning services uh, services to you know, come in and help us, but the amount they were charging was outrageous. I can't, I can't. We'll put it out there. Hold on a minute. Can you put your camera on for us? Oh, oh sorry. Better? better? Yeah, yeah. Let's it's not just miss that. Because it's just a little bit. Is that better? Keep talking. Okay, your audio is low. Yeah, just turn up your own volume. <laughs> I'm aware. <laughs> oh. My volume's all the way up. All right. Keep talking. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> all right. Bye again. So, I don't know what you, what you heard originally. But those guys at the middle school currently right now, along with all the buildings, are doing their best to keep up with what we have for staff now. Um, and they barely keep up. Um, and we have explored the idea of outside um, cleaning services. But the cost to have them um, is astronomical. We've also put it out there in papers and local advertisement for temporary help. Still no takers. So we're not, it's not like we're not trying, but we're not getting any takers on help. So long story short, um, we're really burdened all day long um, and at night with what we have for custodial staff and just keeping up with what we have now under the current system we're following. So to the answer to your question, I guess, I don't know, um, how much more my guys can do or our, our guys can do. Um, the only thing I can say is we can try and obviously we're going to go with any idea that's out there and whatever um, model we go with. But I mean, we're doing the best we can now. I can't guarantee anything. Um, it's kind of like Brenda in transportation. I know her people work hard every day to, to get kids back and forth disinfect the buses in between runs um so i can imagine 
if we add anything on what it's going to take you know what the toll is going to be on that department um so that's kind of my input i hope that helps so there'll be some implementation time is sort of that the brand of the bus is really to we don't think the weeks of the buses so all far but i've actually forgot to mention that possible we'd have to alter um so this kevin you gotta mute yeah you gotta mute kevin one of the things that had in the remind me, um, we were mentioning the transportation piece around um, dismissal on that day would potentially be a different um, factor at the high school to have time for the buses to bring the eighth and ninth grade kiddos from Cranberry Meadow um, home and then to come back. Um, in time, especially for those far-reaching buses, to bring our hypothetically talented 12th graders back to the high school home, which we have a plan to figure that out. It just would be an impact on, you know, you might hear from some families um, who enjoy our bus uh, loop pickup situation. There'd be an adjustment there. Is Brenda on? She was. I am. Yes. You want to kind of touch base on your side? Um, I think, you know, we've looked at what we can do. We've played some of the runs out um, to see how the timing would be with this uh, Cranberry Meadow second plan. Um, I think we could do it. You know, we're, we're obviously all for getting done what, what's asked of us. Um, the drivers, some of the drivers are already over 40 hours a week with the extra runs in between. Um, to, to cover the vocational kiddos. And this will add time to a, a number of those drivers. Um, right now we're currently using every single driver we have um, for everything. You know, everybody has a elementary run, everyone has a high school run, and a lot of them have um, vocational runs. We have some homeless things going on, but Looking at the timing uh, the, of the plan that Ali and I talked about, I think we can get our buses back uh, pretty close to two o'clock for uh, the high school dismissal time. And do you have an estimate about how long it would take you to develop the runs? Um, we would like to have a couple of weeks <laughs> to, to try and put those together. Um, you know, we, we have routing software, but it, it still has to be done by hand. Um, we looked at, as I said, we looked at some of the, uh, the runs to, to do what we had to do. Um, we got some of the bus routes in taken care of already. We just need to put the students on them. But a, a, a couple of weeks would really help us to get that done correctly. Brent, um Length of day for drivers who are picking up these runs, what are you thinking? Well, I think, you know, we're adding on, so there's going to be very, very little downtime for them. Uh, and that was one of the concerns that I had. You're asking folks to drive, you know, already they're driving eight or nine hours a day um, just to do some of them, just to get everybody where they need to go. And, and now you're going to add another um, hour in the morning and another hour in the afternoon. So that's a pretty long day for folks that are driving in a bus that, you know, may need to use facilities at some point. Yeah. <laughs> it's and that's a long time. Specific, is that specific to the Wednesday? Right. Okay. Just to be clear. Yes. If I can ask, this obviously um, a lot of thought has gone into both of these plans, but it seems like we're asking a lot of everybody, including the students at a time that I'm not sure anybody has it left to give. What's the payoff on this? I mean, truly. Yeah. We're, we're, we're concerned about sort of the fatigue of everybody right now, um, particularly with 
And plan number two, we've nicknamed plan number two the cranberry meadow plan. So that's why sometimes you'll hear someone refer to it that way. Because the truth is that in trying to, to come up with these offerings, we've thrown out a number of plans that were very, very, very disruptive or logistically impossible. Um, and even with these that we think are the most manageable options, we're certainly concerned about plan number two just you know, really throwing kids for, for a loop, um, potentially resulting in them not coming is the concern, um, them choosing to just stay on the computer anyways, or being really confused um, about more schedule change. We know that when we transition from yellow 1.0 to yellow 2.0, which was definitely the right decision, we are glad we did it in retrospect, we're like, yep, that was the right move. Um, but in, in doing that change, it took the kids about four weeks um, to get the hang of it, and we saw major shifts in our attendance with kids just being being confused about changing of the plan. And we, we Part of that was that there was Thanksgiving when we actually changed the plan within the plan. Um, was it the, was part of the transition time of that because we changed it and then we actually switched back to the right. other one and then switched back. Which yeah. I think that's a great point too because mm -hmm. we had a dip into red and then a change out into to yellow 2.0, which is certainly also possible under this transition too, right? These things kind of come in waves. So in changing this plan, we can very well end up in a remote situation again. And then you've got a red 2.0, on which we also scaled that up, um, transitioning into a tenth of a yellow 3.0. Um, so it's possible that we could end up there too, but is there almost. Was there any scenario out there that you have already thrown out that included or was an option for additional learning for the high schoolers remotely? Like adding a day of school, but like it seems like all of this is a logistical nightmare. Um, but is there any way they can get additional learning even if it's not in a building? I know we asked that it be in person with your proposals. Yeah. But like we really focused on, on the in-person components, um, but we can certainly yeah, I mean, I don't go back to the drawing board. Okay. If you guys have been thinking about no, this, we this whole time, is there yeah. is that even an option? We yeah, we kind of flipped the in person every which way, so that was kind of our thinking. Yeah. So I so can I here, but I'll, I'll kind of piggyback that. Here's what I see, and I'm sure I'm, it's what Denise is seeing as well. Yeah. We went to 2.0, which included a check in, check out on Thursdays. And it increased two full in person days of synchronous on yeah, so Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday. I'm not seeing a whole lot of activity on Thursday Fridays. At all. Right. At, at all. Okay. Uh, what I'm seeing, more or less, is kids going off and doing their own thing on Thursday Fridays. And that's what I have a problem with. Yeah. Um, if we were in school on a daily basis, these kids would be here all day. They're there on Monday, Tuesday. Why yeah. can't we do, yeah, they're there Monday, Tuesday. Why can't we do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, or Wednesday, Thursday, or Wednesday, Friday? Right? I, 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 there's yeah. there's a disconnect there. That these kids, it's, yes, we have a lot of in-person, and we saw it in the emails. There's a lot of extra stuff taking place on these days, and that's great for the kids that really need them to help and all the struggles and all that stuff, but these other kids that are keeping up on their work, are literally getting nothing on Thursday, Fridays because they're done. Well, and, and they might the also fun. not, some of them are sort of keeping up, but like keeping up means they Correct. used to be A and now they're C. So they're not Correct. falling off. They're not on the emergency list. They're not, you know, yeah. it's, it is, yeah, I mean, I don't know, a single kid is doing anything on Thursday or Friday. I'm sure they are. I'm sure somebody's showing up for something, but. Right. Um, you know, it's... Yeah, I think the, the challenging part there, and it's just a challenge, I'm not, certainly not a no, but it's that, that's when all of that sort of work is happening around those, you know, things that, things that would then disappear would be things like the honors groups, uh, the students who have honors assignments, um, the kids I mean, who need remediation. Um, the kids so the kids that need remediation wouldn't get that anymore? Well, it would be required time-wise if it's a full day. 
that just becomes challenging. But that time when they're getting help would be a little time, long. Full time, tutorial, nighttime, like these were all. Well, yeah. They were in person, they would have a tutorial. They would have nighttime every day that yep. used to be booked by a teacher. That was not like a break time. That was booked right. all the time. So yep. there was after school time. There was like in a normal school year. Yeah. Those kids, the the kids that needed to make up their classes got that time, and it didn't maybe fit into a normal school day, but yeah. I totally 100% yes. understand the schedule. I understand that there's, I understand the amount of work that everybody is putting into this. This is like, none of this yeah. is a comment about that at all, yeah. but mm -hmm. there has to be a way. Like, I feel like everything that we're hearing is all of the, the everything we're talking about is not about the kids. It's about something else, and I just, I, you know, I don't. If if this is if getting these kids more, I don't know what you call it anymore. It's not even sometimes in person, face to face. I don't whether it's a computer screen or a real face to face. Like if we really have been talking about this and working towards it all year, we shouldn't be sitting here in, you know, at the end of March, like, I don't know this. Can I can I just say something? So, Denise, I just want to respectfully disagree with you because I think the admin teams in, in the high school in particular this last week and, and throughout the year have really, really tried to put kids at the forefront of everything like we do always. In I, this district. I, and I, and I, I really did not mean that. I actually just meant like right here in the last 20 minutes. That's and, all. <laughs> and I think I will be very honest with you. Two weeks ago, I was sitting at home listening to the school board meeting and listening to the feedbacks and shaking my head and nodding, yeah, we need to get these kids back in school. There's got to be a way. 48 hours ago, I realized what that actually entailed. And what I think we need to remember is that there are so many little pieces to this schedule because of the size of our school, because of what we're trying to do for kids. It's a logistical nightmare, and it, quite frankly, from what I'm underhearing, is not in the best interest of our kids. It's really not. The disruption that it would cause is astronomical, and I understand, totally understand, and I'm hearing feedback from colleagues whose kids are really struggling socially, emotionally, academically, in all of these areas, but the plan as it sits right now is not going to help them. <laughs> it's going to make that worse. Can we look into other options? Can we potentially utilize some of that Wednesday time for kids to maybe access the school in some way? Can we utilize some of that senior targeted time on Thursdays and Fridays as I'm looking at your schedule? Can we put that out there to, to parents and to kids so they could potentially access that at their at their own, you know, at, of their own prerogative? I also want you to think about and I, and I understand, and I know that you know this, but I think it's important to say that teachers are living through the pandemic too. And we're trying to do everything that we possibly can to teach hybrid and remotely, which is <laughs> far beyond anything that I think any of us have ever dreamed of doing. And we're working really, really, really hard. And we want our kids here. We want them here. We want to see them. We know that they're better when they're with us, when they're in person. But there are so many considerations to think of. It's, we have to be aware of those things. We just, we have to be. And I, so Jamie, I, I, this is hard, right? This is super hard. And I think what is being, I think what Denise and Travis are asking you now is to look at like recognizing the in-person piece may be just too much, but mm -hmm. is there another way to look at um, more contact time mm -hmm. for kids? Even if it needs remote. Even if it needs remote. I mean, a, right? a big part mm -hmm. of my frustration is that like, I know we can't go back, but we shouldn't be having this conversation right now. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we should have, we should have been having it all fall. We should have been having it all along. And, you know, the, when we talked, it was probably a month ago now, and we, you know, I think said, okay, if we can't do anything sooner, let's aim for the last quarter. But now we're talking about maybe possibly maybe after spring, 
and they're done at that point, you know? So I don't, I, it's frustrating to me because, and I actually do, I really do know the amount of work that's going on. And I think that, I think we've always known that because actually everybody's been really good. You guys have been really good at explaining the schedule and going over it. And, and I really do think we know that. That said, it's even, you know, these last couple of weeks, we've had a lot of letters. Those have all been really helpful to, as a reminder, it's all stuff that we, you know, knew, but it's always good to read it just like it's good to read other letters from the community. But I, my frustration is that I just am, um, we shouldn't be here right now. If we should, like, we should have been having this conversation. You know, the only thing that's changed is that the prospects are getting better. Like the numbers are dropping and vaccinations available. No, not everybody's vaccinated, but everything's like starting to, there's some light on the end of the horizon. On the horizon. Yeah. So that's great. So I, I just think this is what we should have been planning for. And I'm, and I thought we were, yeah. and, and I so guess I wonder if we were just kind of wondering if we were ever going to be here, you know what it like, I wondered for a long time, would we ever be in this place where we could actually have a conversation like this? And it seems like, I don't of course, that. now is 12 weeks out. Yeah. We're finally able I mean, to have this conversation. And well, in January, maybe that wasn't a possibility. I think we had as a board, we, we put this out there last summer. I mean, we, we did. And so I don't know about everybody else. I can't speak for anyone else, but my... My understanding was that we were going to reassess everything at the end of the first semester. Yes. And I think that what was, in terms of the timing of that, so at where we kind of left things at the last work, workshop, which pre-Thanksgiving, sort of going into that with, with the, those scale-up options, our focus was trying to make those asynchronous days a little more structured, increasing the face time on Monday and Tuesday, and then trying to build in those increased opportunities for in-person learning for the at-risk kiddos. And so those are the things that, you know, while we weren't necessarily with you guys, um, we were building and establishing, things just take time. So in the, while we got those things rolling, got the kids situated, starting to add this, starting to add that, okay, I think we can. We end up going remote a couple of times in there. Um, and then there was the big surge right around the changeover to semester two. And we had, at that point, a choice. Do we focus on continuing kind of bringing in those at-risk kiddos? Like, we are trying to scale that up. Um, every time we try to scale it up, we, we lose a staff member or, you know, all these other things. So we wanted to put our focus there. Um, but we were looking at that grade nine add on them. The problem was is that the timing um, was difficult given the, the cases that were just sort of out of control at that point um, and the school shutting down. So then, you know, fast forward, we had February break coming on, and then these conversations start coming about, okay, what can we do with the focus on in-person learning, knowing that we really had to start looking at what's possible in terms of widening up that space at the high school. Um, and those conversations are not necessarily particular to just our building. So there's a lot of conversations happening across the district about we fanned everyone out. Is it even possible to sort of collapse that back in? And those conversations are really, really, really complicated. I was blown away to hear how complicated that would be across the key five administrators. I had no idea. Sort of similarly, um, coming from these different worlds, um, I really appreciate the complexity that went into how to make that work. So those things were kind of going on. We're always thinking about this. It's just when the everything changes, um, it's hard to keep one linear pathway. And, and also, so we don't think there's any opportunity for increased remote time. No, I didn't say that. I was just explaining why um, it, it, we weren't just not thinking about this. It, it, there were things that were constantly going on, constantly pushing things forward. Um, but the conditions kept changing. Um, so we had to pick some priorities and think what is the best thing for our buck at that moment in time, what's best for kids in that moment in time. Um, and then yeah, this is where we are just right now. Yeah. So uh, I, you guys have done an awesome job with all this work. I understand there's a lot of undertaking going on. And I don't want to be, you know, come across as, as disagreeing with any of that stuff. Yeah. Um, I will say that I don't like option two at all. Um, like option two is horrible in my mind um, because we kind of, I don't like the disruption. It's going to be absolute nightmare. 
for our eighth and ninth grade teachers to have to jump from school to school. It's going to cause a disruption at our fourth and fifth grade school on that Wednesday, which we kind of are using from Kevin's perspective as a clean, clean day. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I, I don't like the option two aspect at all. I like the option one aspect of being able to get the ninth graders in. As much as I would love to see more 10th, 11th, and 12th grade in person time, we're really struggling with the time frame. It's just not going to happen, unfortunately. I don't, I personally, Feel that come September we should be able to go back 100 just as is by the time September is going to come around. Yeah. That's just my looking at my crystal ball that is never accurate. <laughs> um, I wish it were. Type this thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, right. Um, I, I think that we are really dropping the ball on our Wednesday, Thursday, Friday remote days. And I'm not. I mean, I have a senior. And she's probably going to be really mad at me, but I know that <laughs> what what takes place on those Thursday Fridays. I've also been involved with eighth graders, ninth graders, tenth graders, and I know what's taking place on those days as well. And there's not a lot of activity unless they are at-risk kids or they are proactive themselves to reach out and schedule more time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's as much as I want to see, and I appreciate you guys did the work. It's, to me, it's kind of cemented the fact that we're limited, eliminated, or limited. Yeah on um, getting more people in here. I would love to see us be able to spread it. It's a big school. I was trying to get in here this morning to do a kind of a quick tour, but I didn't yeah. schedule it work. Um, you know, I mentally I picture this big school. I see how I figure, you know, we could easily get another grade in here. We put five grades in here Monday through Friday on a regular regular season. Exactly. This is not regular, right? Yes. Yeah. So I understand that there's you guys have logistics behind the scenes, and that's where it comes to us as trusting you in your ability of laying all that out. Yeah. I just think we need to focus in on that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We can't do remote, which to me, I mean, we can't do more in person. Yeah. Which if these are our two options to do those in person, option two to me is not a good option. Uh, option one, getting the ninth graders in, I think it is a great option. Um, but those 10th, 11th, 12th graders, we got to find more in-person time. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I read a little bit more when you said on Thursdays it would affect the honor society group and the kids meeting special. Yeah. So, like, so for example, if, if Wednesday becomes a synchronous day mm -hmm. you know so we have and again so grade nine i'll kind of go by what is currently happening not if we were to scale up with grade nine but okay. so yesterday for example we had 20 some students in the building who you know myself a few other adults we've got some adults that watch the room make sure kids are on tests and we are running making sure kids are logging on to appointments with teachers to get help making sure they're finishing the math test they didn't finish so the thought is, if those kids at that time are in class, you know, then that becomes time that they're not meeting with their teacher to get the math test done. It's a trade-off. It's, so it's, 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 it's not a right or a wrong. It's just that both of those things wouldn't be able to happen at the same time. Right. Okay. The reason why I'm asking is because we're talking about getting kids back in, not back in school, but more FaceTime. Yeah. Okay. And you're saying if I'm understanding it correctly, is that, that we're, it's complicated by the fact that there's not availability because there are other things like the National Honor Society, those 20 Yeah, kids, so not, yeah, not National things. Honor Society, but like honor sections of classes. Okay. So okay. I've got, you know, 10th grade biology teacher that's meeting with the 11 to 15 to 18 to who I know how many kids at 11 o'clock on Wednesdays is their standing meeting if you are not the honors designation on your transcript. Okay. And that's when that meeting happens. So, so similar to that is that special education case managers might have a full out group of kids receiving right. services. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm trying to understand the equities of it. Yeah. Because you have the top group for yeah. animals that want their animals on the I completely understand that. And then you have the kids that you said in the, in the group that was less than 100 kids or about 100 kids. This is a large school. There's a lot of kids who are exactly that is. They were A students, and now they're not failing. They're being right. honest. But they're not interested in those opportunities. They're not doing things on Thursday and Friday. That's a huge chunk. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, right. what is it's, the It's balancing all of those 100%. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, 100%. So I just want to touch on, so we looked at some of these models before when we, when we came in uh, in November when we talked about trying to improve those asynchronous days, how to get more face time, more structure, which for some kids is working and then, and then for others, maybe they don't need it and they're all done and then they kind of reduce days where you're seeing kids maybe not do so much. Um, part of what is a little tricky, we can certainly take a look at, is that on all those days, the Vogue kids are still traveling to and from Vogue. And on that schedule, because of how we had to make things work, we've eliminated nighttime, which used to be the change over time for the AM and PM sessions to travel to Vogue and get back to Noble. And they would be traveling from Vogue to their houses, which is really far. So for them to kind of race home and get home synchronously, their afternoon classes, they would miss them potentially by the time they yes. got home. Right. To log yes. on. It's a lot of vibes with their teachers. So we would have to do a wide scale schedule adjustment for the whole school. Um, but we can still look at, you know, if, if you guys want us to focus more on improving those asynchronous days or eliminating that instead of a scale up like the cranberry, we could certainly take a look at that. But the vote piece was one of the main barriers to doing it the way we wanted to. So some other schools have a model where they've got kind of half in on this day and the other half's at home and remote and then the other half comes in, something like that. And that model with our current schedule is hard because we have such, you know, for our school, um, a large portion of kids going to vote and transporting themselves because the buses can't get them there and driving really far potentially to do that. So it builds, it creates this problem with time in the middle of the day. That's it logistical complication to making that the way we would like Alan, how many how many juniors and seniors are folk just uh, it's, uh, over 100 130 yeah what do they do on monday and tuesday so on monday and tuesday great question so on monday and tuesday that we've got a completely different schedule because we're not in the building and tied to the actual bell schedule with lunches and all of that stuff mm -hmm. our kids are at home so in the middle of that day we built in a buffer zone and that's where we have our AP kids um, and teacher check-in time and then a break for the kids to kind of like get off the computer and get some food in the bathroom. And that's enough time for the vote kids to get back to the computer back and forth. Right. The two hour chunk of time in the middle of the day. And the tricky part, Charles, you may not be thinking this, but my mind went to why couldn't we run that on a different day? But the problem is because we have people, we have to run our regular bell schedule because we have people in person teaching. Right. So like block one has to be 7.40 to 9.05. Block two has to be the times because we're in person. We can't run, like we can't run the Monday, Tuesday schedule and the Wednesday schedule concurrently so because the times are different. I guess what I struggle with is we do it during the regular school year. These teachers cross teach during the regular school year. Yeah. Why can't they, why can't we get that Great in? But, like, why can't we just follow the same? It's, I think it's too late. But why can't we just yeah. follow the same schedule that we would have followed, at, you know, September if it was no COVID versus now? Yeah. yeah. So part of it is that we had to build in that extra time for AP students on the Mondays and Tuesdays. We also again use that time to allow the vote kids to get back and forth. Typically on a regular school year, all of the vote kids have a common muster location. Um, which is Noble High School. The distance traveling from Noble High School to vote, it takes 20 minutes, um, but that time becomes variable when kids are transporting themselves from their homes. Right. They're not coming here to collect, yeah. to get on a bus to go because we don't have the capacity to bus them. So that means that one kid, well, maybe they can leave vote and get home to get to their computer to sign on in 20 minutes. Great for that kiddo, but we've got some kids traveling really far so they can't make it to their classes. And one of the improvements that we've made under Yellow 1.0 to 2.0 was to switch some things around to help fix some of that travel time conflict under the previous schedule. So we've avoided the conflict at this point, but um, something we talked about last time is that some teachers and both students created completely separate classes because they were um, encountering some conflict. And we received a lot of feedback and concern from parents about that. So that's something that was fixed. If we kind of, adopted that more like the model that we're talking about that problem would resurface um and, but exponentially more so it's not impossible but it's just a that's one of the big conundrums that we encountered when trying to do 
exactly what you're asking. And in a normal school year, we had the nighttime chunk in the middle of the day. And we did away with that intentionally because we wanted to limit the, of the amount of staff in the building each day. We only, we, only, we only wanted them here when they were teaching a class. We didn't want to have all that transition. When we started this, we had no idea how this was going to look. So when we would run nighttime, when we were running the entire school, every adult in the building had a KT with like 12 kids in it. So that, that would require the entire staff to be in the building. We just didn't have enough space with social distancing to be able to do the nighttime, which is why we did away with that. So then that eliminated the buffer that we had for the kids who were traveling to or from SRTC to either get there and get back here and not screw up the whole schedule. Yeah. The other piece is that adds time to the day and we um, end at two this year to make sure that we're um, not affecting the K-5 transportation fleet. So, I just want to see if anybody on any board members that are remote want to ask some questions or ask some waving. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Were you just saying hi? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, can you hear me? Because sometimes I fade out. Yeah, you're good. Um, part of, and I don't know if this is the right place to bring it up or not, but I know that Recently in the high school, there was an issue with two individuals who ended up taking out an entire grade, essentially with um, coming to school infected and having close contact with a lot of people. Um, and that's a lot of havoc caused just by two people. If we start switching the schedules around and have more students on campus at any given time, we're inviting that kind of thing to a huge extent. I was um, talking with one of the teachers and found out that there are cohorts in the school where 50% of the students in that cohort self-admitted that their families don't believe any of this is real, which means they're coming from a setting that is not supporting the uh, protocols of the school. And that means they're coming from a situation where they may be exposed much more than other families. Um, and also a huge number of the students are working. Uh, and these are usually public facing jobs. The families need the income. That's the reality. Um, but that also increases the pool of risk um, that they would bring then into school with them. And clearly, not everyone is following the protocols in terms of taking the temperature at home and don't come in if you're not feeling well and so forth. Um, and if we try to bring more bodies into the buildings, we're... It's kind of like we, 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 we were on a plane at the beginning of the year and it burst into flames, so we jumped off. And the administration had this worked really hard on these great parachutes and the parachutes kept us safe and they were tailored to the needs and did a, you know, they really helped everybody. We're not done falling yet. And this isn't the time to shift the parachute around. Right now, the system we have is keeping people um, <laughs> exhausted, but functional and safe. And we're not in a situation where the ground is close enough that we can just take that last little hop. Does that make sense? Yep, I think too, Estrita, I think at this point too, you guys are really thinking more about looking at more remote sort of interactions. You know, right, the, 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 so I guess what I'm saying is, I, I know that a lot of work has gone into the other, other yeah. you know, the plan one, option not, option one and option two, but I, I'm, I'm with Travis and Denise on this. It doesn't seem, it's, I think it's going to be too much disruption and too much unnecessary added risk for the benefit that would accrue, potential benefit that would accrue to the students. It would be a huge disruption. They're already at the, at the you know, at the end of their ropes. I, I, I think figuring out how to engage the students who are twiddling their thumbs on those empty days, which aren't supposed to be empty, is the key. And, and as long as it's some kind of 
even through a screen face to face is a better option to explore than to try to um, mess around with with the physical plant and make it make it work that way. And we would be happy to, to take another hard look at that. Um, those are just some examples that we were giving around the book about why we didn't go, go there initially. Um, and then really hearing that kids were struggling in the remote capacity. Yeah. Balance the synchronous and asynchronous. But if that is the direction, we would, we would be happy to go back and see what we can do to improve that again. Right. And then I think the advantage, I'm by no I guess turning, I'm sketching out numbers, and but is the implementation time would be much shorter. Right. So I know it feels like yeah. nothing concrete, but this is something that if we can, if we can put something together, and I think we can, we're talking. You know, a week just to let families know we're, we're not needing Brenda to come up with a plan. We're not needing, you know, like the turnaround time becomes much quicker. Ideally, so we, might, we would we would need some time to think about what's feasible and what makes right. sense for kids, and honor what you're asking us to do. And we would we need some feedback from our teacher based leadership team because they would be the ones living through the logistics of this. Um, they would be very valuable in helping advise us. Of, Hey, this makes more sense than that. Because there's going to be um, things that I'm sure we're not even thinking of here tonight as far as what's going on when. Yeah. But yeah, I want to just throw in a couple of unrelated things. Um, one is thank you for being willing to absolutely um, consider that. But the you know there's we've got a lot of feedback from the community, from parents, from kids, from teachers, and I think there are. Um, there's a lot of good feedback. There's a lot of um, misunderstanding, I think. And um, I, you know, I've heard everything from the kids that are not, you know, taking advantage of those days and doing all their work are just lazy and their parents are lazy and, you know, whatever, all sorts of other things. But the reality is these kids, <laughs> really like their teachers yeah. like this is yeah. they're no these high schoolers are no different than fifth graders Absolutely. they really they're here to learn from their teachers and i kind of wish everybody could just like be on the same page about that like this is this is actually a compliment to the teachers mm -hmm. yeah and it is not that like these kids are 14 15 16 17 years old <laughs> they do not have everything figured out and how to you know, keep themselves motivated all day long. I'm sure there are some that are doing fine, but it's hard. Like this is, they don't have, they haven't built these skills yet. And the reality is we have amazing teachers that keep them engaged. When it's class time, I hear laughter. I hear stomping. I don't know what the stomping's about, but like, <laughs> I hear, you know, there's sometimes there's sword play. And this is how senior, you know, <clears throat> like there's, um, I hear it, like I can hear the conversations and it's, they are engaged and yeah, it's not ideal to be on a screen and nobody thinks that, but the, it's not like, and again, I'm not, I can't speak for the board. I, I, I think people would probably be in agreement. This is not something just to, we're not wanting our kids just to be entertained or like babysat or, you know, at any level, they, they learn from their teachers. They don't, they're not learning all that much on their own. And if that was the case, they wouldn't have to be here, you know, but it is, our teachers have so much to give and to, you know, they, they can tell even through a screen if somebody is not really engaged. And, and I think that like, I feel like adult, as adults, we get, you know, we do, we get buried in the logistics because that's our job. We have to do that. But if we could just, um, if we could just remember that it's not that we want them to have more hours and it needs to be equitable, blah, blah, blah. It's just, they just benefit from their teachers. Yeah. That's, that is really, 100%. that's all there is to it. And, and then I would, but my only other kind of thought is, I think it's been amazing that we've been able to get the Vogue program going this whole year. And I do think that some of these pullouts that you guys did in the 2.0 were good, but um, like a little bit to Travis's point, you know, in a normal time, um, you know, we did have these the KT, the other blocks, whatever, and 
you know, my understanding was that for the most part, honors kids just got extra work within the classes that they were in, and sometimes they would have a meeting. But it, for the most part, they just kind of got extra assignments. Or actually, in some cases, they helped they helped with other kids in the class. Like that was what, I mean, that's, that's something that I think is kind of an interesting honors model is like, do you know enough to be able to help someone else? Well, there's a lot of kids struggling right now. So I think that, um, although I think that a lot of those extras were good, um, you know, we are, they're able to serve some people, the, you know, the kids that are in both have been able to have a, a tremendous amount of in-person learning. And I don't want to, we can't take that away and we can't stop that. But if we can get a little bit flexible on, I would hate for the for us not to be able to offer something more to all the other kids because of a transportation time buffer. So I don't know, does it mean we have to dismiss everybody 15 minutes later across the district? I know that would be a pain, but um, I don't know, you know, so mm -hmm. let I think that like you guys did your your trade-offs here and and I I think that obviously we would do that with anything. You guys right. do that with anything, but um you know, it's maybe we look at the fact that three quarters of the year a certain population has been able to get some services and maybe maybe there's some trade-off now for this last short spell where all these other kids might be able to, you know, I don't know, we make some of that hour. Yeah. We will absolutely take that. Yeah. Some things are more easy to resolve than the, the other ones, but it doesn't mean we can't figure something out. I think we can, mm -hmm. especially with the help of getting some feedback from, from the, from the guys that are going to be in there. Yeah. As a four, do we all kind of want to throw rocks and two away? As a board, we all kind of want to throw a lot of two yeah. away. Get, get rid of that one. Yeah. And, and I, I just want to, like, Joanne and Lynn and Rebecca and Stephanie, does anybody else, I mean, you can you, you sound like you had some questions, but does anybody else have any feedback? Yes, please. <laughs> um, I, uh, I had a page full of ideas before I came tonight, and I could throw it out because after listening, I understand that they were definitely, um, there's too many parts to have to move and too many things that just wouldn't work. But as we were sitting here and talking and everything, and or I'm listening, I should say, I, I'm sitting here thinking about it. I just wondered if this is a good idea that might help out a bit. Um, could we do one day of the week towards the end of the week, like a Thursday or on a Friday at all the schools where the kids have to eat in their classroom for the day and that frees up the cafeteria and it might not be all of high school maybe it would just be seniors i'm not sure of the numbers but maybe um the kids from each you know lebanon kids go to the hansen school you know each of the different towns go to their school in the cafeteria and it might not be the in-person teacher one-on-one -on -one time but maybe they could sit down together and maybe there could be some sort of uh, a group group project assigned for that day from the teacher so it's still that they're not getting that one-on-one -on -one in person time because it sounds like you know that's that's a real big hurdle to go over but at least this would get them in the same room together seeing each other physically being there and if they're working together on a project it's not through the screen I just, I don't, it might be a bad idea. I just wanted to throw it out there where I had it and I'm thinking at least, you know, it gets them together. I think as a parent of a senior, I think there's a lot of seniors who are getting together. <laughs> a lot of juniors are getting together. Yeah. Uh, they're not, a lot of them are active. Yeah. They're yeah. actively hanging out with each yeah. other and their friends on a regular basis. Uh, there are some that aren't, I know that. I mean, there are some that are, uh, the right terms, following the rules 100%, yeah. but there are a lot of them are not. So. I guess the question just is, if if they were having something assigned from their teacher to do together, you know, so it drives towards educational goals and socializing at the same time, if that might help everyone. I think it's, a, I think it's something to consider, Steph, but I think there's a lot there's still a lot more logistics with it because 
they're like everybody's all over the place kid wise, but I, I still think it's interesting and we appreciate it. My okay, point. I had to get it out while it was in there. That's <laughs> fine. It's all good. I, th I think this is such an important conversation that we've had tonight yeah. because I think a lot of people in the community have absolutely no understanding about what a complicated issue this is. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think this has opened a lot of eyes. Hope so. Um, and I think I I don't I know you guys have done a lot of work, but I think either of these option one, option two, really are kind of difficult to do at this late game. I would love to see um, more face time with the kids um, remotely, mm -hmm. but I think um, it's there's no easy answer. And for someone who doesn't have kids in school now, which you guys had that advantage, um, you, so you see what's going on every day. Um, I think it's uh, it, it's such a difficult and uh, difficult issue. I. I know how it is when you when you're kind of like that middle of the road kid that doesn't if they do kind of slip through the cracks, especially at this with this type of situation. And that's why if we could just get a little more time with those kids in school, well not in school but remotely, I think that would be a big help for them. And I know that's even that's going to be a difficult thing to try to find a way to make make that work, even if it's just a check-in. You know, a few times a day with the kids, but we do that. Yeah, we will certainly work on that. Thank you. Yeah. For Absolutely. These yeah. plans. No. I think I think another help, and, and I, yeah, I think we could look that. But I think another help would be is how can we get more activities back? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Like the, the seniors in general lost prom, senior ball, homecoming. Yeah. They lost all of this stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, how do what we can get? We do? How do? Yeah. How can we get? Some of these activities back yeah. safely. Yeah. You know, it's hard to have a dance because it's going to be really <laughs> awkward not to six feet away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why are we calling middle school dances? Yeah. They're already six feet away. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's got to do mini We're trying. But I'm glad to hear you say that because one of the things that we're looking at these scale up plans and then the, one, the really scary ones that yeah. We're not even going to go there. Um, it made transitioning to looking at those other things much more difficult because it, we, the capacity of trying to pull off some of this stuff pulls us away from looking at, at those other parts and pieces. So um, I really appreciate that. I appreciate, I think we appreciate the feedback. Um, we allow us to look at this in a different way to make, to free us up a little bit more to look at some of those other special components yeah. that have started to put in place here. Um, to end the school year with kids feeling like, okay, I already know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and here's some of this fun stuff that we, we're going to get back. And, you know, the, the work that the teachers did yesterday and this morning and tomorrow, greeting the kids, they came through the door so much more quickly, which was a problem for me because I had to make sure that they had sanitized, but, you know, either they were, you know, afraid to go through all of that commotion or <laughs> it just, you know, you can see the energizing effect of just some celebrations and return to normalcy. Just in that kind of like hurrah moment in the morning. So, yeah. I, I think I think the, the spring sports are going to be helpful. Yeah, yes. Where we seem like we're on pace to have a yep. spring sports yes. season. Sure, yes. Yes. And if we can get families and people to watch spectators to yeah. watch these as controlled as can be, okay. that that would be helpful. I don't know yet. I haven't heard that. Right. 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 I haven't heard that. <laughs> uh, but I think that's helpful. It'll be helpful yes. to have those things. And I think. Mentally, if we can work on the school side, we'll also work on these extra activities to to boost up their morale. We'll, we'll help them out. Right, and you do have a huge um, senior parent group that's willing oh and able to help. Right, I mean, because really they've been awesome. knocking on my door a lot. So yes, they are more than willing. Yeah, to on board. <laughs> yeah, and you give them a task, they will take it. And there are some that are they've been taking these tasks for. I just want to say I think that the senior fall or dance or whatever it's called this year should be one giant outdoor bonfire party. <laughs> Will you come? Me? Uh huh. Well, and help keep them three feet apart. I'm, I'm working oh, on three feet, I guess. We can totally do that. We can walk around with like hula hoops on. And like, <laughs> yeah, well, oh my God, that's a good idea. We have a crowd. 
actually did a, a bonfire it was a, just a huge yeah it's a big success yeah. you know so yeah outdoors yeah i just mean i love it i want to just make sure lynn and rebecca are you do you have any feedback other than what we've been saying about option two and one go ahead lynn we can't hear you. Oh, Lynn. No audio from Lynn. No, no audio, Lynn. Lynn, we can't hear you. Sounds like you're muted. Oh, sorry. That was Rebecca. Well, um, I, I was just wondering, um, is option one is that based on a six foot distance to get the ninth graders back one more day, or is it a three foot distance? Six, right. Yeah. Six foot. Yeah. You would maintain a similar structure because yeah. they get that junior senior group right in the area. Yeah, I'm just concerned that if we don't have the cleaning staff to follow the guidelines, how are we going to do it? It sounded like, from what Kevin Moore was saying, they're stretched pretty thin right now. Uh, I was thinking. This was going to be a debate over whether to go to the three foot distance, but it seems like it's more of a matter of facilities and the, you know, staffing involved. So, yeah. <sighs> it would be nice to get the ninth graders back one more day a week, but I don't know. Um, so, that, if the ninth graders came back, it would be the same schedule. It would be all day fair. Yes. We yes. have three grades in the building at the same time. Yes. And we have the ability to do that because the 11th and 12th graders have, we'll say, half the classes are in the morning are at both, and the other half are in school, and then vice versa flips in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I mean, I know my daughter's home by 10.30, so. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> yeah. That's what so if we have bus drivers, if we have, we lose one bus driver, it throws the whole thing out of you know? Yeah. Well, and adding the ninth grade wouldn't change transportation. No, it would take just a little while because that has, that route hasn't been run with 9, 11, and 12. Hasn't been a thing, but I think it, it's a much smaller scale to make that. Yeah, I can't imagine the bus buses that are at the time to be right, not a one day. No, right. That, and that's the day, that's why they pick the let's say, because most, well, a lot of juniors and seniors have. The only transportation impact may be with food delivery still, but we've already created a potential workaround. Yeah. Thank you, Tina. Do you need any other feedback from us? Um, are you looking at that? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, I guess I, I'm not clear. We are right. Well, yeah. Yeah, I think the, the clarification would be just it, one, one of the challenges is when there's too many variables um you've seen like how sensitive all of the things are when one thing moves it really affects all sorts of different parts so i think that we need to know if we're one and option one and two are both gone and we would like us to just focus on the remote piece or if, if um one is still in the game because if one's still in the game it, it affects how we try to figure out the other problem so we kind of that would be great if we could know that if one and two are out focus on Okay, so let, can we just do a strong poll for the board? Um, I would recommend that we get rid of option two. Does anybody, do people agree or disagree? Does anybody disagree? Okay, so we'll get rid of option two. Can you give us an example of how, if we did, I mean, I'd love to see the ninth graders get an extra day, but can you give us an example of how that would impact you putting ideas together for, say, adding another, and actually, the other part of that question is, and maybe you don't know this yet, but would you be, do you think if you were starting to think about the adding another remote day, it does, do you sort of feel like that's going to be adding one day, and then, like, maybe keeping Friday as is, or something like that, or is it, are they a package deal? I think it would have to be different days. Because we have different grades. Different grades might have. So maybe one extra days. day for each, one yeah. extra grade for each, for one extra day for each grade. Right. Okay. Like that. So, so it, like how much, I mean, I'd love to see 
anybody get more in-person learning? So if it's the ninth graders, but it, it does that completely unravel? No, no, no. Like, I don't think it unravels, it just changes how we try to strategize. Well, and I guess my question would be, if we had grade nine come in for two days, grade eight is in for two days in person, I would imagine we would want to focus on figuring out the 10, 11, and 12 additional remote, remote. and leave eight, uh, eight and nine alone. Well, it depends because there's mixed grade level classes still. Those right. nine graders that would be impacted. So it might be a package deal between nine through 12. Oh, that's right. So, so and that's, can you remind me again, it's, this is sort of the question I asked earlier. So if ninth graders come in on Wednesday, does that Re replace a remote day or no. replace no. a no day? It replaces a no day. A no day. Okay. So it's a win for those guys. I mean, I'd love to see what we could do with them coming. I don't know. Maybe we maybe we still end up with two options. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I think we can take a look at both. I have a question. Yep, get tricky with the four grade electives, though, and making sure that put it in a location where everybody, whether they're here or whether they're home, can actually attend it. Stephanie has a question. Thank you. Um, so, if we did go with option one, would there still be the possibility for um, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade to possibly get more remote time? Or if we went with option one, does that knock out the idea of added remote time? No, we're talking about it would we're that, that's what we're talking about is that they would get more remote time. Um, I think the priority is to get some more time, mm -hmm. and that if we could do it with the ninth graders also getting more in person time, that would be, I think, people's preference. I, I think, I okay. think if, if we could play it out, that kind of like what we were just saying. And I don't know if it's possible with all yeah. the interchanges, yeah. but if we give them at least one more day, ninth, ninth, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth, one more day, that's whether that's in person or remote, can that happen? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and having the ninth graders come in twice is that Great. one extra day. Yeah. yeah. Right. Can we can we make that work? I don't know if you can with the eight. Because they're already here for two yeah. days. Right. Yeah. And I don't think you can add that. another remote day for the eighth, and I don't think you can add another remote day for the ninth if they're going to be here for two days. Right. So right. they, they could add another one. They could add another one. If it freaks something up significantly, and I, I, I can't even think at the moment, but like, if grade nine not coming in freaks something up to be able to have more FaceTime with grades 10, 11, and 12, mm -hmm. it sounds like that might be the preferred. To get everybody as long as the nine can get another face time. And nine more face time as well. Exactly. Right. However, that ends up. I, mean, I think we're all about we, we want them to get more face time, yes. Yes. whether or not it's here or on the computer. Yeah. So, would you like to have us kind of take a look at both models and then develop the one that achieves that? Regardless, maybe grade nine will be in and maybe it won't be. Yes. Depending how it impacts the others. I actually guess the value. Yeah. We want to max it's basically about maximizing yeah. for right. as rates as much as possible. Yes. We just need some time to sketch it all out. Yeah. So that could be good. I kind of have it in my head. <laughs> 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 well I don't want to say I don't want to say it, but I think I think I've got it figured out. Oh my goodness! <laughs> We've said that five hundred times this past. Some <laughs> sort of crumpled up paper that all started with that same exact comment. We think we figured that a lot, and then we have it. So let's just hold on. Yeah. Can I, can I just say I like to apply Ali and AJ in the high school. I mean. For, it's almost like you wake up at 5 a.m. and there's a thousand piece puzzle that you're putting together and you put together about 980 pieces by 10 o'clock at night. And then the last thing that happens is someone knocks over all the pieces and you get up at 5 a.m. and you do the same puzzle again. <laughs> Just the attitude that the high school has had, all of us, all of us, but especially a couple people down in there, it's just been amazing. And with Joe and Nancy and Amy, I just want, I think everyone knows that and, and they're going to start another puzzle tomorrow morning and I think we got good feedback and I've been sending some texts to Melinda to try to see what we can do six seven as well, especially with some um, remote time um, and we'll, we'll keep waking up and getting that puzzle going 
and just uh, just the attitude that the high school has had in allowing us to share their campus and having a successful two days a week for Nova Middle School. Um, we, we've had some experiences six and seven that we would not have had, and the teacher and the teachers would not have had if it wasn't for the people at the high school and the support of the board. Um, I, I just wanted to say that because it really has been amazing um, and uh, frustrating. But we'll they'll be doing it again tomorrow. We'll come back again and we'll we'll keep going if we can get ten weeks or a fourth quarter um, with with more some stuff going on. But um, it's been amazing the the effort that people are trying to do. Thanks. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I know I appreciate drastically what they're doing. Um, I want to follow up though. What are you guys doing? What are we doing? Six uh, seven? Yeah, you guys are in school hey, Monday, Tuesday. What happens Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> what happens Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at the middle school? So just to review, I just complimented the high school and Nancy Samard says, there you go. <laughs> That's what happens when you leave the high school for a decade. You kind of, you're, 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 it, was, it was coming anyway. So. Yeah, so fairly, I know it's already late, but fairly quick. What we've been doing, as you know, is the two full days here, Monday, Tuesday. And then we have two blocks, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, followed by an hour and a half of student support time. And then in the afternoon, our bar meetings, our team meetings, our department meetings, our staff meetings. And I think the hidden piece that we don't really know, and I think Jamie really spoke highly of it, is how many dozens of middle schoolers and hundreds of high schoolers are meeting with teachers. And there's still hundreds that might be gathering or doing other things, but it's hard when you're, I would imagine, you know, the third biggest high school in the state, or even the middle school where there's, you know, 400 kids and 100 kids are on the remote team, and that's a whole different world going on. But there's so many individual supports going on in the afternoon we don't see all that where the teachers are, are like we said they're putting in more hours in the afternoon than they ever were before but it could be travis it could be you working you know you're with like 13 consecutive individual help sessions where the other 17 kids could be outside throwing their frisbee around or, or so it doesn't the optics might be a little off but um anyway so but that's what we're doing similar idea wednesday thursday and friday are morning classes and then and then uh, student support time and then our, our staff meetings with a lot of individual help sessions, interventions, specialists, same idea, same frustration, and now the same wondering of can we increase our, our remote time with six and seven as well. So, I so, so right now your six, seven are getting five days of teacher contact. Yes. Yeah, they end up with three three sessions each week per class because they have their Monday all teachers, Tuesday all teachers, all classes, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We go through our schedule. So you're, you're seeing your math teacher three days a week. You're seeing your, your art teacher three days a week. Um, so they end up with with their three three sessions each week per class. So I I'd like to be able. Uh, Lynn was in the chat typing because she can't be heard. So I'm just going to read what she what she said. Um, so first, it was um, she doesn't think that option one is worth the upheaval and amount of work necessary to change the schedule. And it won't satisfy the students and parents of 10, 11, 12. The streeter agreed with that. And then she just typed in, I think, the misperceptions among students, parents, and other community members that students are only being schooled a couple days a week is a serious problem that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. There are also taxpayers who think that teachers are being paid their whole salary to only teach a couple days a week. Yes. And so that is that is the perceptions that we're dealing with, the misperceptions yeah. we're dealing with. Rebecca said, good point. And I just said, I'll share your thoughts. So uh, I, I think those are good things for us to be aware of. And I do want to say that I don't think anyone on the board thinks that nope. people are not working for the full time. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. <sighs> <laughs> so what's next? Graduation. Graduation. <laughs> um, I do actually have one graduation question. I, I, it sounded like you're thinking about moving the date because the Friday there would be kids in school. Yeah. Can I just ask why? I mean, that seems like an obvious thing. So what, what would stop you from just moving the date and then? I didn't want to, people. to make the official announcement because I'm not sure that's my role. But that is something we've been brainstorming. I think it's kind of like a, uh, it's no, it's, 
Yes, yes. we can actually yes. talk about that right yes. now. Yes, we're going to bring it to you. And we're yes. say, we'd like to move the date to June, to, to June 12th. How are you feeling about that, people? Are you going to bring it to us at a different time or right now? We'll do it right now. <laughs> I think it sounds great. Okay. Should yeah. we vote on it? You know, I don't even think you need to vote on it. Does anybody, Maybe. Does anybody disagree Maybe. with moving graduation by a day from a Friday to a Saturday? June 12th. The 12th. The 12th. Oh. June 12th. Right? So that's the Saturday? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anybody online? Does anybody other than Travis and Denise care what day graduation is? <laughs> My only question would be, with that, if we move it to the Saturday, is that going to cause a split in the classes to where we try and minimize the amount of people at the facility at a time? I'm not sure. Or are we going to just be able to go, yeah. I mean, we can't tell the future completely, okay. right, but are we? I don't. What well, I don't want to see is I don't want to split the classes. Yeah. yeah we but I don't think it'll be any different on, on the Friday versus no, Saturday. Well, no. But I'm like the Thursday we go to a Saturday. Yeah. 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 Well, it's going to allow for to expand it. Yeah. But I didn't yeah. want to. I didn't want to have a morning yeah. session and yeah. then have an afternoon session. Yeah. No. We're we're hoping that that's not going right. to need to happen. The good news is that something weird happened and like I don't know something comes out and there's a reversal on guidelines or whatever. We would have the space to do that worst case scenario on a Saturday. Yeah. Anyway. Well, we don't know, you know, what the track the traffic situation is. There's gonna be difference in lines and distancing and the availability of the officers. Saturday is a, is a better day for yeah. that reason. So it gives us more buffer. I think so, we also might want to consider a rain day. Just absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have to do this outside. Right. We do not rent a big tent. They're can, very, very large. Yeah, large very tent. Tent. I can tell you that, I, and I'll, I'll speak for myself, and I'm pretty sure I would speak for most parents, and rain's not going to stop us. From right. Yeah, I'm trying to say it. Rain is fine. We have a lot of baseball games in the rain. I think it just makes for better pictures. Yeah. All right, so that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing June 12th, rain or shine. Fine. Fine. All right. It's on the calendar. Okay. Do we, because it's on the calendar, that date for graduation, do we need to vote on it? Um, I think it, I think it's a, it's an in-district decision. So um, so the calendar would we vote on is what we send to the state regarding date number of days and stuff. I don't, I mean, you can vote, though, if it makes it feel good. I can put it in the minutes. <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, we can. It's okay. That's fine. Either way. Depends on what, why doesn't somebody make a motion in the we'll motion. Motion. We'll motion. 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 motion? It has, has been an issue in the past. And uh, June 12th. Okay. Uh, I'll second. We have a second. So we have no there for June 12th for graduation. All right, I see hands. Rebecca, okay up there? Yeah. Let's yeah. good. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor. Do we want to come up with a rain? Or I guess we'll leave that to you guys. Do you guys want to go up with a rain date no. aspect? Or? Rain or shine. Rain. I love that. Rain or shine? Yeah. I'd love it because you first, though. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take all of Peter's, I don't care. Uh, I would be trying for hurricane shows up that I, day now. Know, I, know. <laughs> I, think that, I think that if people know what to expect, they will, right. you know, rally around. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Adapt and overcome. Yeah. 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 That's, this yeah. class has done that for years. Yeah. 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 I think exactly everybody in this class is going to be. So happy to have a graduation date. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We're just going to be so happy that it's outside and it's together. Yeah. The rain isn't going to, isn't going to decide. No. Right. Yeah. All right. Moving forward. So can, are we comfortable closing the workshop and going actually back to our agenda? Yeah. Do you guys have your clear objectives? We do. I, I do. I do have one question. Yeah. Um, there had been talk last time of going to a three foot distancing as opposed to a six. Are we going to discuss that at all? I think at this point, we're not doing that. Right? We're, not changing. we're not changing. We're just going to go forward. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Wait, thank you. When, um, when do we think we can come back and have? Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. next week is probably not going to happen. I'm pretty sure we're meeting on a weekly basis. We are meeting yeah. weekly right now. Oh. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's we will let you know if we have something ready by then. Yeah. Um, it, even if it's a, right. a first draft that yeah. you know, and if you guys feel like you are looking for some direction. Um, yeah. Yeah. How far till Florida four? April second. Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. That's the Friday. Mm -hmm. Friday Which is two weeks from now. I mean, I think if possible, I'd love to 
have a, an update next week. I would think that <laughs> we would have to know that. You know, we'd like to have yeah. some idea. We'll have we'll an update, update about the progress if, if at Yeah. All right. Thank you. How about a five minute break? And then come back? Okay. Thank you. I know we don't have any. Uh, yeah. I know. Yeah. 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 You don't have to. Go home. All right. I just thank them and said they can pop off the thing. Back and make sure we go. what they had for us for us to just look at because I think it would have been very hard to do on our own. Exactly, yes. So the red is what they're recommending. Right, right. right. I have a question on AC. AC, yes. okay. Um, the second and the third paragraph are almost exactly the same, except um, the second paragraph, I think I needed to find out what this was meant. Which which paragraph you want to keep? Um, oh yes. Okay. Which one? Which one are we keeping? The first one or the second one? But, uh, where of uh, an AC? AC paragraph two and paragraph three. Well, one is for the employees and one is for the students. No, it's the. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is? I don't know. What is for genetic information? What is that? It's not listed in the second one, but I didn't know oh, what interesting. That. Yeah, and then why wouldn't it be in both? Right. But what is it? It looks like like the DNA. Right. It's the yes. DNA. It's also if somebody um, it has to do with if somebody has a disability like autism and things of that nature. But that would, they've already got it listed as it or a disability. Right. I just don't. If you have a, it's not necessarily a disability. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's a genetic disorder. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then that uh, that needs to be in the second paragraph then too. It should be in bold. Yeah. I would think. Uh, yeah. Uh, I we can we could yeah, get some input. Yeah. 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 Sure. Why it's not in that third paragraph? Okay. We can do that. And then, um, I can't really hear you guys, but I did notice on I just was reading them that somewhere in there that it references Cape Elizabeth School District. Which oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. ACAA. Yeah. 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 Good one. Under the sexual harassment. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I see that. Those are the only two things I saw. So we came that one as well, or can we approve that for the change? If you are comfortable, we can accept ACAA with that change, and then we will get further clarification on AC. Mm -hmm. C, C, right. C in both paragraphs. Yeah. Right. So a lot of this is procedural, like there's a lot of procedures in here, that's why it's so long. I'll make a motion to accept the policies as presented um, with the exception of ACAA with the uh, correction on that one and the and cabling policy AC. Okay. I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor? In favor? Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, could I ask that we move um, employment up? Just because there are people in the audience listening and they wanted to be able to go to bed because they're teachers and they want. <laughs> um, it's regarding retirement. I think people wanted to, to stay in. <clears throat> the other thing in it, um, I. <clears throat> 
Is it okay if I mention the church? I did. Oh, you did already? Right. Okay, good, good, good. Okay. All right. Okay. Are we okay bumping up employment? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's All on right. the, I just. All right. All right. So I'll start with the leave of, leave of absence. We have Katrina Gilbert from Hussey School who is requesting a one year leave of absence for the 21 22 school year. Um, and that is primarily some childcare things. And we need to approve that, correct? Yeah. So we want to make a motion to approve that. I'll make, I'll make a motion to approve the leave of absence for Ms. Gilbert. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Lynn? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So this is this is what they're yeah, they're waiting for. Yeah, these are the retirements. All right. So, so this is uh, with great respect and deep appreciation that I bring forward the following teacher retirements. Uh, Stephanie Harris, kindergarten at Pussy School, 36 years. Mm -hmm. Where's my kindergarten teacher? Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Karen Jennings, who's the social worker at uh, Knowlton School and at Hussey School for 21 years. Yeah. Sue Huff, who's the literacy coach in Lebanon for 40 years. Wow. And Rebecca Good, physical education, Noble Middle School, 37 years. So that is a total of 134 years. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Incredible. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So those are our retirement letter submissions. Uh, thank you. And I can never remember. Do we have to? Yeah, you have to. You can do them all at once. Yeah. I'll make a motion to accept them with appreciation for all their time and years spent. Second. Yeah, I will gladly second. Yeah. Very useful comments. Yeah. All in favor? Yeah, many thanks to yeah. all four of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, thank you. So just a quick one on the budget review. We um, shared a Google form. Um, next week is our budget meeting again, a budget workshop. And so have the form in hopes that if there are any questions you may have ahead of time, if you want to put that in the form, the questions in the form, that would provide us an opportunity to bring those, those answers right in. Um, we will also have um, administration remotely so that if there are any specific questions that come up for um, cost centers, they'll be available to answer the questions. And um, we'll spend a little bit of time on school nutrition and adult ed because we did not spend a lot of time on that other than facilities yeah. and finance. So we'll have um, a little bit more information for um, those two cost centers as well next week. So those that's just the update on the budget. Did anybody have any particular questions tonight that you wanted us to like look, get some answers to? I didn't have any tonight, but I was wondering if there were any questions last week that we had agreed to circle back on tonight. I don't remember if if or if all of the questions. Like I know you had some questions, and but I, I feel like maybe we answered those last week. But were, was there anything that was still? Well, I think we talked about the guidance piece. What? I'm not sure that Linda was completely satisfied with the answer but that but I understood and I think we'll continue to I, I think people should continue to think about that one yeah um, so so I did hopefully you got the Google form and then you can just yeah. I instead of the um, the documents that we've done in the past which didn't actually get filled out very often either I thought this time <laughs> I'm gonna just keep harassing you and I will just keep sending you those things to say if you have questions about the budget put it in there so we because if you have them everybody else does too right at least at some level so and uh, it's really helpful for us to have the, hear those questions because they're going to come up when we present when we go to yeah. each town yeah. to present the, the right. budget we'll have the other you thing know, is we'll if you can get the questions in before mm -hmm. Tuesday afternoon or evening, that gives us a couple days to make sure we have the answers for you. Mm -hmm. Instead of that question coming up and then we'll get back to you. Um, we try really hard to know everything, but we don't. <laughs> so. 
All right. All right, so educational programming update. I just want to give some attendance information for our students for the last uh, two weeks. Exactly kind of the same number, exactly the same number. So um, the low was 90% um, in attendance, the high was 97 for both weeks. And then our staff is running 91 to 96% um, in attendance. And then I just wanted to update staff vaccinations mm -hmm. for you. We have um, a conundrum that a lot of the, the, the systems that are on the border, like Kittery and York and 35 and 60, mm -hmm. uh, we have staff that are living in New Hampshire and working or living in Massachusetts like, and commuting in to Maine. And Maine has enough vaccines, or when they get them, they're allotting them for residents, um, even educators that are residents, not educators that may be from a different state that are, that are working in our district. So we have 12% of just teachers in our district, and then we have a higher percent, like we, we come in around 20% of all staff right. that live in, not in Maine. So they have not yet been able to be vaccinated or even had opportunity right, to be on that list. Um, the, and the other piece of that mm -hmm. is that if you live in New Hampshire, um, New Hampshire is allotting everything for educators and they have to put educators in the, the New Hampshire school system. Oh so the, right. the folks that live in New Hampshire right. but work in Maine are kind of done a lot of luck. So right, they're working on it, but no, it's just a yes. question. So I know somebody mm -hmm. has reached out to us yep. and we've been working with it through EMA. Uh, I know that well, I, I work the clinic tomorrow, so I can try and push again some more questions, but um, have they gotten any feedback yet? This is a couple of weeks old that I've been made aware of it from my other job. Have we gotten any, any update or any pushback? I can Sense say that? I can say something. Sure. Um, the MEA, the Maine Education Association, is aware of the issue, and they're working um, really hard at the legislative level, which is where the change has to happen to make it possible for the teachers that 20%, like in our district and in other districts, to get their vaccinations. Um, but what the MEA is saying right now is strongly encouraging all of our members to reach out to their legislators to correct the problem in a you know kind of expedite and correct that problem so um i guess the short answer is no <laughs> there's not really a, a solution yet but it is definitely at, um, yeah. on people's minds for, for some point. reason it just popped in my head that the pharmacies in hannaford's and walmart don't have the same restrictions as the clinics that york county does are they able to get into those if i recall it, that was one of the yeah. The outs that I heard is that if they went to a the pharmacy at Hanford, wherever they're both yeah. one in, mm -hmm. they were able to get into that, but they weren't able to get into us at the clinics. I'm not sure if they are actually like I went and got my vaccination today, and like I had to give my driver's license, yeah. so I'm assuming they're going to look at that and probably. At, at like a yeah, 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 yeah. So. I got to, I got my vaccine today actually at Walgreens in Springvale. And I had to show my ID, and I also had to show that I worked for a main school system. Hmm. That was at Walgreens. Now, that could have been because I signed up as an educator. Who knows? Um, right. But anyway, so we have today, another option. So today, um, we got an email late in the day from Kittery, from the superintendent of Kittery, who said that Walgreens and Kittery reached out to him and wants to partner with the Kittery School District and neighboring districts to offer vaccines for staff that's New Hampshire or Maine, yes, and they it. just need to know the numbers. So, so we're we on had yes. Jen send out a survey to staff who would be interested because we have to let Kittery know tomorrow so they can call so they can reserve yeah. the vaccines. Yeah. So that and is so that would be open to our New Hampshire yes. 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 Oh, yes. that would be great. Yes. Yes. Okay. I also do know that we in behind the scenes, and I'm not saying when I say we, I'm not talking about me, but I'm just talking about the emergency yeah. Yeah. in this area mainly North Burke and York County are uh, working on trying to do a a satellite vaccine like they did for us okay. when That's we great. got vaccinated. Yeah. Good. Uh, I don't know 
the timeline on that, um, but I do know that there are things in the works. Um, but right. yeah, that's it, great. It's ridiculous that some of our teachers have to travel hundreds of miles to get vaccinated when yeah. we've got vaccines right here, sitting right in Sanford. Right. Yeah, and and I will say like um, it's good that there's going to be other places with trained professionals there because we do have people in our district that have pretty severe allergies and need to be somewhere where somebody can jumpstart them if they need it. <laughs> um, oh, That's yeah, what I know when I work in the clinic, yeah. making sure you don't go into yeah, trouble. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, um, so that option, having that option available for our teachers is huge yes. and just giving them that, you know, maybe we don't have to take a full day off of work to drive to Portland because we have an appointment at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. It would be great. So thank well, you. Walgreens made out on me because they make you wait around for 15 minutes and I bought a bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> It's better than sitting in the marshals and waiting 15 minutes, staring at a clock. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> waiting for the clock to turn to your time. Yeah. Um, so we had, we did coordinate so that our 60 plus staff um, have all had an opportunity to be vaccinated. And um, it was pretty um, bumpy in the beginning as far as being able to register, but we got that squared away and the feedback that I've received from the staff that had signed up, it went very smoothly when they got there. Um, so that's good. And then they're going to look at the next group after, you know, we'll, we'll get a prompt about that when it's time. So. Do you have any idea how many teachers are declining the vaccine or how many staff members? No. We did a survey quite a couple of months yeah. ago yeah. and 75% of the staff said they would be interested in um, being vaccinated. But I think more information has come out about the vaccine and how safe mm -hmm. people are finding them. So um, our thought is that it's going to be much higher yeah. than that. Mm -hmm. We cannot request right. to see documentation of that. Right. Um, so. I've seen recently in the news that the whole um, vaccine disinformation stuff and the fear of it is getting stoked by Russian operatives. So it's <laughs> one more crazy, one more way to try to destabilize us. Yeah. Right. But it is proving safe. Even the AstraZeneca. I don't know if you guys were hearing about that in Europe. They were a lot of countries had stopped using it, but it's all been approved and back yeah. in play again. So it's all yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the last student day, I'm still kind of on educational yeah. programming, <laughs> is uh, June 16th. That is with one snow day, and hopefully we won't have another snow day. <laughs> well, yeah. okay, so that we wouldn't have another like out of school we, snow day. We, unless we yeah. have I mean, well, we had, we, had, we had shared with our staff that we would make the first two okay. snow days officially snow days, but at this point in time, I'm sure everybody's going to be like, nope, just finish. Just I mean, finish. <laughs> so what, what, say that again, June 16th. 16th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so congratulations to 12. But and then and the kids are done on the 16th. Yep. That feels good. Mm -hmm. Actually, what would that look like, though? Because that's a Wednesday. So oh, for the elementary school with the last physical day be the 15th? Probably. And then we'd have to figure okay. that out. Yep. Okay. Good catch. Good. Uh, yeah. Good great catch. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be able to do remote. Like, no. Well, I mean, I mean I'm assuming they're fine. let them keep their stuff again. Yeah. yeah. Just in case. Yes. But yeah. We could do a morning meeting on the last yeah. day yeah. or something. Yeah. Last day is far. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. fun last yeah. year. Yeah. That's the, <laughs> the virtual, like, we did yes. the virtual. Um, yes. Field day. There you yeah. go. That that was, yeah. That was fun. Fun, but it was fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no, it was us as families getting dumped with water. Oh, yeah. 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 And when oh, the family's like, instead, of, right. instead of the yeah. teachers getting dumped yeah. with water, yeah. the parents did. Yeah. Oh. It was a big family activity. I mean, it was cool, it was fun, but it was a lot of work for our family. Don't have the teachers set it all up. <laughs> hey, I was out there with my own. Me too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, and then, okay, so then we just did the employment. Yep. All right. So actually, I have one other question about vaccination, just real quick. Given the pacing that you guys are seeing, um, and I know they're all different as far as how many, how, some of them are up to three weeks in between. Do you feel like, for the most part, people are able, people that are eligible in Maine, are able to get appointments and things are kind of moving along. It feels so like maybe by the middle of April we would have 
at least everybody wanted to be vaccinated? It does feel like it's moving along faster than it was two weeks ago. I think they're still talking May. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think, you're, you're yeah. not going to get everybody back. But it's, it, it's like the Pfizer is 21 days. Regardless, 28 days. Yeah. 28. Right, yeah. They get their second it, dose, and then yeah. once they get their second dose, it's two weeks after that. Well, and then fully vaccinated. when I was talking with a lady today, my next shot for, and I, have, I got the Pfizer, is 28 days out, 27. Yeah. Because they just stretched it from 21 to 42 days uh, that you can get your second shot for Pfizer. So I think because of just capacity. Yeah, there were no issues. So. I think a better goal might be the end of May. Yeah, a better goal might be the end of May. Yeah, but hey, that's good stuff. Yeah, that's good. Cool. My arms all said. I was like, oh, what's that? You just got it today. I did, and, and it was. You got six months. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any, any other? Okay. Great. We talked about the last. I think it was last meeting about. Uh, School building, mm -hmm. exterior, interior usage. Yeah. Where are we at with that? This is coming back to us with some stuff. Right. We're still working on collecting some information, some kind of policy information on that. We do have some groups that are, we have a list going of um, different groups that want to use the space, and we've written them down as they've come in, so we'll be prepared to um, offer them out. To the first one, the second one, the third one. So yeah. as mm -hmm. they've come in, we've been able to um, have that go go back out. But my question is, it, I know the inside is diff much different than the outside, and I don't know if there's a, if if we need a policy for outside, or if we just need to say because it sounded like pretty much everybody was in agreement that we wanted to be able to allow the different different groups to use outside. It became an issue with the bathrooms. Like, do the porta potties versus like at the high school? We do have facilities. Um, yeah. So I guess that's my question. If we could figure out the outside one before the inside one, that would be better because everybody's it's the outside that they want now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Everybody wants outside, right. and they're right. time. They're running out of time, time. to get away. Mm -hmm. If this is not an option, they need to find another option. Right. It's an option. So, so we need. Yeah. So but we need to do we open up the? Do we open up the bathroom facilities? Right. That kind of I thought that where we left it was that we did. We were in favor of having the outside with the bathroom right. open. But we also talked about was there going to need to be a fee. And would we be able to get custodial support yeah. to san to do the san sanitizing so, of the yeah. bathrooms? Do these people need our bathroom facilities? Well, that's that's Most a bigger of those question. Places, I don't think I don't know if we've ever really used the bathroom facilities for the outside events if they're at like the baseball fields or uh -huh. I think if they're in the stadium, then they're using the bathroom facilities. Yeah, but I don't know if we've ever really used the stadium. Okay. Okay. But, uh, there were regulations. Well, that's just porta potties. Well, but I think there might be porta potties out there, and I think I think the high school puts porta potties out there for their normal spring yeah. floor and that's that, they use. that okay. are being used. Okay. So I, I I'll have to check with Kevin. I honestly don't know what we've actually put on site yet because we've been sort of on hold for everything. We so, haven't put anything on. Site so we yet. that means that we'll. Mm -hmm. But we have spring sports coming. Right. But that's so, not clean by. Us. No, no, Those are that's more by the Ford party right. company. that we pay for. It. Right. right. <laughs> so, is that going to increase their regularity of having to come here? I don't know. Or right, you know? right, right. Okay. But it'll. I think the the key is we're going to need to talk to Aaron about how often the fields are being used right now or will be used, and then how to fit in any outside folks. Right. So, my guess is it probably won't impact it greatly, right. like in terms of uh, mm -hmm. increased use. <laughs> So we're talking to Aaron tomorrow. Yeah. Just we have a weekly athletic meeting on Friday, so we'll talk to him about that. And then, if you're comfortable, we can call those groups for outside use after we have that conversation. It's going to be the in indoor use with the fee for using our space. That's going to be the longer discussion. And that was actually one of the policies that did not get done last year. Yeah. No, we're still and it, it's going to take, I think, a little, it may take a little bit of time because of that fee. I think that fee has always been a sticky wicket in our district yes. about well, how we charge, yeah. who we charge, who yeah. doesn't get charged. 
Um, but yes, if we can move ahead with the yeah, the I'm outside. Sorry. My personal opinion, we move forward the outside. Yeah. And I don't think we necessarily need to do a fee unless we could. Okay. Uh, and unless we find out that the water bar companies are charging us an extra, okay. you know, mm -hmm. but, a large amount of extra money to kind of clean the places. But would we be on the hook if someone did get sick because it wasn't sanitized between uses? You no, know, we have some liability. I am. Or, that's what I'm concerned about. Yeah. Because they're not, they're not going to come every every day that we have an event to, right. to clean the porta potty. But that, you know, they're not going to do that. So I think that's what we have to find out: who's responsible for keeping it clean in between customers. Okay. Right. I don't, right. I don't know if we actually could keep it clean between customers. Can you say email lines? That's a, like, I mean, yeah. yeah, I think so. I mean, I, yeah. I've been a number of places this winter that have something like that. Yeah. You know, they make sure that they've got, you know, hand yeah, sanitizer. Yeah. Yeah. The stuff available for them to sanitize yeah. afterwards, but as long as I think we put signage up, it says, you know, these are not being regularly sanitized, right. provided, use at your own risk. Yeah. That's what we have to find out how yeah. to protect ourselves. Okay. All right. Just maybe yeah, that's in the facility, the, the use agreement. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Stephanie, did you have a question or a comment? I thought I heard. Um, I, uh, I I think I said right around the same time Travis was talking. I was just saying the porta potties, maybe instead of opening up the actual facilities. Um, so all in the same line of thought. Okay. I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, they're not out there right now. No, no. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, yeah. On a regular basis. I think that's it. Yep. Yep. That's not an added yeah. call. We'll check in with um, Kevin. He's the, yeah, and he's the porter body king. <laughs> <laughs> I love the new name. <laughs> oh, hello. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do. I do have a question, a, 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 I guess a different other, um, and it was kind of triggered by all the letters that we've been getting lately. What happens to emails that are get are sent to the board but not submitted for public comment? Do they go into meeting records in some way? Or do they just sort um, of disappear into the ether? They don't necessarily disappear, but they are, because it's going to the board members, they can always be accessed via, if people ask, like, ask for um, freedom of information, any letter that's been sent will get sent out. I mean, will get picked up. Um, yeah, so they're, they are a matter of public record. Yes, yeah, they're just, not, I don't know, I, to be honest with you, I don't like download it and stick it in a file. It's just okay. in there, yeah. I just wanted to verify, <laughs> thanks. Okay. Thank you. All right, any other others? Feeling like we're back in the old days, 10 okay. o'clock, people. <laughs> Uh, we're working on here earlier than I did. Yeah. You did it? Yeah. Oh, one second. Oh, second. Ms. Carter. Ms. Carter. I need to do a second. Did you second that, Ms. Carter? Yeah. I guess we'll work on her timing. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> two hours.